It's time for Twig. This week at Google, Jeff Jarvis is here. Paris Martineau. We'll talk about Elon Musk's lawsuit against OpenAI. <laughs> OpenAI has a response, and they brought the receipts. Uh-oh. Paris got a CEO fired. She'll tell you how, and probably was a pretty good thing. And then the AI worms. How are they going to impact us all? It's all coming up, and a whole lot more on Twig next. <laughs> Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 758, recorded Wednesday, March 6th, 2024. The Right to Who's. This Week in Google is brought to you by Collide. You've heard us talk about Collide before. But did you hear? Collide was just acquired by 1Password. Woo! That's pretty big news since these two companies are leading the industry in creating security solutions that put users first. For over a year, Collide Device Trust has helped companies with Okta ensure that only known and secure devices can access their data. And they're going to still do that, but now as part of 1Password. So if you've got Okta and you've been meaning to check out Collide, now is a great time. Collide comes with a library of pre-built device posture checks. You can even write your own custom checks for just about anything you can think of to guarantee that devices entering your network are secure. Plus, you can use Collide on devices without MDM. That includes your Linux fleet, contractor devices, and every BYOD phone and laptop in your company. Now that Collide is part of 1Password, it's only going to get better. Check it out at K-O-L-I-D-E Collide.com slash twig. To learn more and watch the demo today, that's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash twig. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show where we cover everything but Google uh, with uh, the great Paris Martineau from The Information. Hello, Paris. Hello. Hello, Hello Leo. You can replace your signal number now. Everybody, I did. Everybody has a name. What would you like us to put there instead? What is your signal handle? Uh, I'm Martineau. Dot zero one because you have to have a number. You have to have a number, which pisses me off. Uh, what is this AOL? But I guess it's so that you know, I it is really annoying because I think I would have been able, it would have been fun just to get Martino or Paris. Yeah, but alas, no one has Leo have. Laporte yet. It's brand new. Anyway, I got Leo sure. Laporte twenty four because that's the year. And that I, is true. I might have Leo Laporte twenty five next year. I'm just thinking. So we will say Ooh. we will say Martino dot zero one. There's a dot. You got a dot in there. That's interesting. I didn't know. It's I could true. Do that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's Benito. Let's from now on stop giving out her personal phone number. <laughs> it wasn't it's ever, not my personal. It was phone never a good idea. For, it never was my personal phone this, number. Just to say for the record. Hello. Is this Paris Martino? <laughs> Listen, I've only gotten a small number of creepy voicemails, and I think that that is a gift in and of itself. You are so brave. You are so brave. Uh, here she is with her grandpa's on a podcast giving out her phone number. That grandpa over there is the director of the Town Knight Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism. Let me, let me wake up. Let me wake up from my afternoon nap. Uh, Craig Newmark graduate school of journalism at the City University of New York. Well, the university, yes. I uh, filed my taxes yesterday, Jeff Jarvis. Aren't and uh, because I'm over 65. That's my weekend fun. I have a, uh, we have a, Lisa and I have an accountant who she does the business and she does us too. And so she does it all. And I guess her software made a note and said, oh, you're over 65. So I got this, the 1040 SR U.S. tax return for seniors. Wow. What is the senior? Well, I was hoping case? that maybe they give you more money back or like you get a better deduction, but all it is, is bigger print, bigger check boxes. <laughs> And an easy-to-read deduction <laughs> table. Thank you, well, Congress. Well done. Can you believe that? Now you don't have to put on your readers to do your taxes. <laughs> Jeez Louise. All right. Uh, you have a choice here. Do you want to talk about Elon Musk today or not? The answer to oh. that question is always going to be yes, unfortunately. There's Leo. so much Musk again. Want to or need to? Well, I don't know if we need to. I don't think we need to. You know, he's suing OpenAI. Uh, 
you know, he says, ironically, well, you know, when we started OpenAI, the whole thing was designed around safety and keeping uh, artificial intelligence out of the hands of the big tech companies like Microsoft and Google, and they have betrayed my trust, and they and now they're run by Microsoft, and that's not what we thought. And I, I don't know what the legal grounds for that are. In fact, I think the legal experts who've looked at this said, you, you can't really enforce a handshake deal like that. But OpenAI has responded, and they brought the goods. Did you see this? Yeah. They got the emails. Uh, Elon said we they should... They came with the receipts. It came with the receipts. That's the way they, uh, they're the professionals. Scroll, keep, scroll, keep scrolling. They're down there. There's the emails. You know, they're saying, basically, Elon says you got to raise a billion dollars. And the only way to do that <laughs> is... To make me CEO, give me majority equity, board control, CEO, and more most importantly, merge with Tesla because they got the money. He's uh, and of course Sam Altman and the OpenAI folks said, "Well, no." And Elon left in late 2017. We and Elon decided the next step with Elon for the mission was to create a for-profit entity because it's so expensive. You know, Elon only uh, put in $45 million only, you know, like I could give him that. Uh, but they but they <laughs> they raised more money from other donors. Initially, they planned for $100 million, but it came pretty clear quickly. This is, this is what Sam Altman wrote. We all understood we were going to need a lot more capital to succeed in our mission. Billions of dollars every year, which was far more than any of us, especially Elon, thought we'd be able to raise as a nonprofit. So in 2017, we decided we got to make a for-profit entity. Elon wanted majority equity, initial board control, and to be CEO. In the middle of these discussions, he withheld funding. He said, ah, that's it. Just Reed, like him. Reed Hoffman jumped in, the LinkedIn's uh, founder, another multi-billionaire, bridged the gap to cover salaries and operations. We couldn't agree to terms on a for-profit because we felt it was against the mission. And this is important. Remember Elon saying, you let Microsoft run it, man, this is not what we were hitting. We thought it was against the mission for any individual to have absolute control over open AI. So he, then he suggested merging it into Tesla. You get a load of that. In what 2018, and again, they produced the emails. Elon forwarded us an email suggesting OpenAI should, quote, attach to Tesla as its cash cow, commenting that it was, and this is so Elon, exactly right. Tesla's the only path that could even hope to hold a candle to Google. Even then, the probability of being a counterweight to Google is small. It just isn't zero. And then shortly thereafter, he uh, he left, saying our probability of success was zero, was actually, in fact, zero. And I'm going to do it myself. So the I think the I think these hey emails, now he's got Grok and Grok oh. as we all know is pretty much just like Chat GPT. It's as far as we <laughs> yeah. can tell based. It's it is Chat GPT, but that's <laughs> it, is Chat it is Chat GPT literally. It's a it's a rude Chat GPT. So they they produced all the emails uh, with all Elon's own words. I think they. I think they. Got I do think cold. it's very funny to imagine a world where you know Elon Musk is owns seven different companies, is CEO of four of them, and I guess then it would be five of them with being the CEO of OpenAI. Because he can do everything, in Paris. Everything he, he can does. do everything, and he should get paid fifty five million dollars. Uh, I think believe that was the amount uh, he was asking for to do it. So, by the way, we should point out that the. Um the lawsuit quotes many, many times a Microsoft research paper that was never published, uh, which basically says, oh, we got AGI, it's coming. I mean, this thing is almost sent, sent oh. to you now. Another one of those accelerationist uh, nut jobs. Well, he's insisting it is now. Yeah. It's not sentient. As far as I can tell, it's not sentient. Uh, it, 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 I it's do not think general intelligence. It can't add. Yeah. It's also worth noting that uh, the complaint quotes uh, a wide variety of sources, including, I'll just read this part, to the contrary, OpenAI's attainment of AGI, like, like the song Tomorrow in Annie, will always be a day away, ensuring that Microsoft <laughs> will be licensed to OpenAI's latest technology and the public will be shut out. Precisely the opposite of the founding agreement. I just... 
The, honestly, I mean, listen. Who said that? We talk Who a lot. That? This is this is in the complaint that Elon Musk, Musk filed. A, Musk's lawyers sent that. Too bad the ants not they here. Had a few we jokes. A, we could do a rousing rendition of the sun will come out tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> ants in the chat, so he can't stop us. <laughs> Um, Bet your bottom billions on tomorrow. They'll be They'll AGI. Be AGI. <laughs> <laughs> it just said in the Discord, I hate you all. I hate all of you. All of you. He's not happy. Sorry, Ed. Yeah, sorry, Ed. No, I'm not. No, no I'm we not. did it. We did it to make you nuts. And he knows we're just, we're doing it out of love. Um. Did you? I put this in the show notes, hoping that you might read it, f so I don't have to. <laughs> I think I know which one it is. It's too city, long. From the city, yeah, TLDR. City. I tried. I tried. <laughs> no, he's an old conservative blogger. He talks about um, uh, basically test grail stuff without doing test grail. So yeah. you know that's going to get downgraded. He does for me. quote uh, um, Ray Kurzweil, who I've interviewed. Uh, he's Google's chief AI engineer now. Uh, long time. Uh, wizard at MIT's uh, AI lab, author of The Singularity is Near. You know, he was the guy who 30, 20 years ago at least was saying it, there's going to come a point when machines are as smart as we are and then it accelerates rapidly uh, and it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. Oh, gosh. I've only read the first paragraph of this, but the first paragraph of this essay by Michael J. Totten concludes, the first time I used ChatGPT, I almost forgot that I was communicating with the machine. Ugh. I mean, I know we, I know obviously ChatGPT is leaps and bounds beyond everything, but this is just Eliza all over again. It's just yeah. people being like, wow, yeah. machine so smart. It person, I impressed. But you would agree, Ray Kurzweil, on the other hand, is somebody who's worked in AI forever uh, is one of the early AI pioneers and is not easily snowed by, oh, you know. But he's, well, he's a snower. He's argued this forever, too. Yeah. A few years ago, Totten writes, Kurzweil gave a talk about what he calls the law of accelerating returns about how information technology, this stuff we've been talking about for 20 years, has advanced at a double exponential rate since the 1890s. Um, not exponential, but 2x exponential. Exponential growth, Totten writes, is radically counterintuitive. It's true. Remember the famous story about the guy who invented chess, and he goes to the Shah and says, you know, here's chess. The Shah says, I love this game. What can I give you? Any reward is yours. And he says, I'm a humble man, the chess inventor. Just give me one rice, grain of rice for the first square. There's 64 squares on the board. Double it each square, two grains a second square, four <laughs> grains. A, and the Shah says, no problem. And they start bringing in rice and then bring in more rice. And by the time you get to square 64, it's more rice than in all of the kingdom because of exponentiation. We're just, we don't understand it. It doesn't, our brains, it's like, what? Uh, how much money, he says, do you think you'll have after 30 years if you put a dollar into an account that doubles in value every year? A billion. That's how, in 30 years... Um, so that's exponential growth. He says, but we're going double that rate. What he's really saying is we're going to make a thousand years of progress based on the current speed over the next decade. Does that, I think, it, you know, those, that's, that's giving very hard numbers to something that's a lot squishier, but I don't think it's far off. If you think okay, of people who are born. It depends what thousand years are we talking yeah, about. Yeah, well, that's like, true. I don't know. Like a yeah. cup, I don't know. <laughs> A thousand years, a couple thousand years ago? Sure. Yeah, we're definitely doing that. But there was that. a lot of progress then. I mean, they invented the codex. They invented a lot of, uh, the, 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 lots of things back then. But, you know, here's, uh, I was talking to Jason today on that other podcast. You do, wait, 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 we can give you a plug. that You do an AI podcast with Jason. Where, where can we you, find AI that? Inside. AI Inside.show. AI Inside.show. And, um, you know, I asked, why is the human brain the uh, goal for the machine, why isn't it computer intelligence? Actually, that's all this talk about that's a good question. artificial intelligence. The last right? thing you want to do it's is so duplicate. Because it's so egotistical, it's hubristic of us. You don't really want to duplicate our thought process. It's it's famously unreliable, uh, influenceable. Right. You, you're having a bad day and everything's gloomy and, and dark. You're having a good day, it's all sunny and bright. 
We don't want machines to act like us. Well, we have eight billion of those anyway. Yeah, we already have eight billion, says yeah, Benito. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need Imagine anymore. if Chat GPT got generalized anxiety. Yeah, that would we be don't. Bad. We, what we want, really, honestly, is something be much better than us. And maybe yeah, we're or, get or it. that is our tool. That that what I want. It's when I tell it what I want, it delivers it reliably back to me. He and quotes, I can now use my language to do that. He, as an example, he quotes Kurzweil talking about the human genome. Project. It was a 14 year project, started in 1990. Halfway through, only 1% of the genome had been collected. Mainstream critics, Kurzweil said, called it a failure because they figured seven years, 1%, it's going to take 700 years. Kurzweil says, no, no, no. We finished 1%. We're almost done because 1% is only seven doublings from 100%. In fact, it did continue to double every year. And did take seven years, not 14 years. So that's what exponentiation can do for you. I Is that a word? Exponentiation? Oh, hell yeah. Yes. Oh, it goes know. along there with oh, corpora. I learned a new one today. <laughs> corpora. Corpora. Corpori. Corpora. Corpora. You, me, he, she, they. Corpora. Joy is everywhere. <laughs> Funiculi, funicula. Um, we're not trying to turn this into a, a, a music. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I promise. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the dumb will come out. <laughs> uh, so Sam Altman says you're about to enter the greatest golden age. Arthur C. Clarke said many years ago, the goal of the future is 100% unemployment, meaning lots of leisure time while the machines do the stuff we don't oh, want to do. Yes. I don't know. Nobody thinks yes. we're going to reach that point soon, but I'm, now I'm reading from uh, Totten. Nobody thinks we're going to reach that point soon. Uh, sorry, I, I lost my place. But hey, no Altman, one thinks that you're we're gonna you're gonna reach that place. I'm, soon, I lost Leo. my place. But Altman, Kurzweil, <laughs> and other optimists believe AI will match human intelligence in all domains by the end of this decade, and usher in the era of AGI. By the way, Kurzweil has been saying by the end of the decade for many decades. So I don't yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, I mean, it'll tomorrow. probably be at the end of some decade. <laughs> I don't, Certainly, I think I think it is what there's what he's saying though is not impossible. That it is. Do you not think it's accelerating? Do you not feel like it's accelerating? <sighs> well, accelerating from what? Well, what we don't know and is if it'll what? fall off a cliff. Yeah. But at this point, yes. Think about when we the first stable diffusion images came out, and what we can do today with Sora. Uh, I, I, we're definitely making rapid progress. Are we not? Does that not feel that way? I hate to do it. I hate to do it. I've got to do it. Gutenberg, imagine the, pro the, 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 the rapidity. Drink. The exponentiation that occurred from scribes to print. It was gigantic. Supposedly in the first 50 years of print, more books were produced than in the entire history of humankind. That's pretty major. So um, we've gone through phases like this before. Uh, yes, uh, but look, look from 1900 to now, we... we not, not only do we, did Wilbur and Orville write proof that you could fly, but we landed on the moon within 60 years of that. We almost destroyed humanity twice, yeah. We, we created nuclear power and used the atomic bomb, unleashing, you know, the energy of the atoms. A lot of... We released a great movie about J. Robert Oppenheimer. We have great... We have IMAX. We went from... Yeah, we got IMAX. We went from picture books to IMAX. There's been... We have TikTok. The last, the last century has been remarkable. I think much faster growth and change from people who are still alive. My mom was born in 1933. The changes she saw at television, you know, radio was in its ascendancy in 33 now, then TV, then movies, then Vision Pro. <laughs> Has your mom ever seen a TikTok, do you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The change from 1875 to 1925. Consider what all happened then, right? That was Electricity. Huge. Yes. Steam. Yes. Flying. Broadcast. Um, uh, cities. Uh, 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 industry. Good God. Huge. So I changed. think that that's faster than Gutenberg <laughs> plus 100. I have to say. Uh, yeah, come on, Jeff. At least in technology. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think the like leaps made from pre Gutenberg to post Gutenberg are pretty. I mean, if you're just comparing and contrasting before, it's quite a lot. Yes. 
Yes, which is the which is the argument, and in the Gutenberg parenthesis available at gutenbergparenthesis.com with a discount code. Thank I think most that. people would agree. <laughs> oh yeah, we're all drinking. Sorry, I think I was going to say I'm out of I'm out of water, but you know, <laughs> we've got most to of those do are it. from you, Paris. Thank you. Uh, I think most of us would agree that, except for you, Jeff, and maybe you, Paris, <laughs> that the last hundred years has brought far more change than the previous thousand. I don't know. That's 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 the the hubris okay, of the present tense. If you're comparing a thousand years ago to a hundred years ago, I think that is more dramatic change than nine hundred AD to, great... to nineteen hundred AD. That's oh my god! Yeah, that's a crazy amount of change. Yes, in comparison between I would now say, and the Great Depression, I would say that's the same amount of change as we've had since nineteen hundred to two thousand. That amount hubris of change of the present over tense. a thousand years. I don't think that's hubris. I think that's true. But I don't have the energy to write it all down. So you're so. right. You're the only one who thinks that. But however, since it I is think your everybody show, watching you just spoke that. for all of us. I think everybody watching thinks that. <laughs> a thousand years ago, uh, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. This is a new term. Get ready. We got it. Uh, moving on. We got a new term. You ready for this? Foom. F-O-O-M. Foom. The fast. Fear of. No, no, no. No fear. Well, maybe fear if you listen. Fast onset of overwhelming mastery. <laughs> this is the foom scenario. Uh, is the uh, uh, what Claire the Berlinski, machine masters? Yes, the Claire Belinsky okay. calls the AI suicide race. Uh, <laughs> Very dramatic. More <laughs> how, how did we go with foom versus AI suicide race? No, City well, Journal. I, like I say foom. this. I say this respectfully. It is a conservative journal. If you are in the old sense of conservative, so if you are conservative, you are fearful of such change. I actually don't think that in this uh, piece that he's arguing against it. I think he's actually it's a fairly good piece for the the general audience about the issues that we talk about all the time uh, between mm -hmm. accelerationism and, so, and test grail and all that. He says he's just talking about what people are saying. He's not. Uh, I don't think he's a. Uh, well, I don't know. I haven't got to the end of it yet. We'll get to the end. <laughs> He says, a, I get, we get, is a we sudden, get to love this as it happens live. It's a so sudden, great. as I read the article, I'll give you the information. Uh, see, if I had AI, it would already have finished it. A sudden. Well, actually, why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? Take the whole text and put it into AI and see what it summarizes. And give, give us a one paragraph summary. Yeah, please. Can I, can I just do it my way? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're replaced, Leo. Go ahead. <laughs> Fear of on fear. Fa I'm sorry. No fear. Fast onset of overwhelming mastery <laughs> is a sudden increase in artificial intelligence that it, then this is important. It exceeds our ability to control it and makes it Ugh. the AI the most intelligent being on this planet. No, no, mm. such BS. Doomerism, BS. Tesquiel based. Well, but then he debunks it a little bit because he talks about the uh, Nick Bolton. Nick Bolton. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Bostrom. Michael Nick, no. <laughs> Nick Bostrom. Nick, Nick Bostrom. Bostrom is the leader of I know. Tesquiel and BS. He, I know, and he de he debunks it. He says the now classic example is Bostrom's paperclip maximizer. Right, right, right. Which he says. He does debunk that. And then, yes. he, then he quotes uh, Eliezer uh, Yudkowsky. Oh, who is really bonkers, the yeah. worst of the bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then he calls, then he quotes Steven Pinker. Bonkers on the other side. Who's 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 just unbearable. But <laughs> you don't like any of these people. He's bonkers no. on the other side. He's a Harvard professor, cognitive scientist. He says, you would agree with this. The doomers are wildly overreacting and yes. gorging themselves on a salad bar of category errors. Ooh, ooh, that's nice. Engorging a salad bar. Oh, that's good. The, well, the doomers good. have to engorge in a salad bar because the doomers are all vegan. Quote, the AI existential threat. Existential no, they threat. kill They kill the cows that they eat, Paris, like, like oh, such true. does. He says Sorry, the, Leo, you the, can continue. The AI existential threat discussions are unmoored <laughs> from evolutionary bio, biology, cognitive psychology, real right. AI, sociology. He says none of it's just as Picker is all optimism. Yeah, he's Life an optimist. He says there's nothing inherent in being smart that turns a system into a genocidal maniac. Why would True. AI have the goal of killing us all? Why not the goal of building a life-size model of the Eiffel Tower out of popsicle sticks? Equally valuable. Right. Uh, anyway, I think it's a good article. It, I don't think he's making a, a case for either side. I think he's Does he laying use it the out. Does he use the word Tesquiel? Uh, if, is I mean, that my good only, or my bad? only problem with it is, is, is I, I get I get Ajita 
when people like Bostrom are mentioned without the context. I put in Bostrom. Of eugenics. I put in Bostrom. Bostrom's in the article. He mentions paperclip maximizer. He doesn't actually. Well, he doesn't ascribe, mention Bostrom. He doesn't ascribe. You see, it that's to the problem. You've got to go to the to the heritage of this stuff, to the provenance. He has a link which probably goes to Bostrom. Bostrom. Anyway, and and last paragraph. Yudkowsky is bad. At, okay, you're finally there. It took you a while. The AI could have done a lot faster. But go ahead, Leo. So what do we actually know? That AI is coming faster than almost anyone realizes. That the pace of change will accelerate, and that nobody. Not computer researchers, not economists, not historians, not your favorite podcasters. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> knows where we're headed. But for what it's worth, I see artificial intelligence as something like fire. It will warm us and it may burn us. Yes. I think that's good. Fine. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think this is... Like any, anything. This is really a summary for uh, people of the debate that you and I, and we're all so enmeshed in it that we kind of... You know, we we use shortcuts like Tescreal, which no one but the three of us even <laughs> understands. And oh, I'm sorry, Molly White understood it. I was very impressed. She yeah. was she was yes. good. She knew exactly what you were talking about. So that makes four. to your to your disdain, you didn't want it brought up again. You hate that word. <laughs> I love that you were like, please, Jeff, don't say it. Don't <laughs> say Tescreal <laughs> in front of our guests. I think it's an unfelicitous acronym. That's all. Uh, true enough, but so is the philosophy, unfelicitous. It's fitting. Milan Fusk. <laughs> <laughs> Milan Fusk. Many people are saying this. Milan <laughs> is being sued. Finally, you may remember that Elon, when he took over, bringing the sink into the Twitter offices, promptly fired without cause uh, the CEO, Parag Agrawal, Ned Siegel, CFO, uh, Vijaya Gatti, who you said is very good, the chief legal officer. Yes, she is. And uh, Sean Edgett, former general counsel. They were just like, out there to see you. Bye. Uh, the group alleges in a, in a lawsuit filed Monday in federal court in California that he stiffed them and they sued him over unpaid severance. They dispute his claim that he had cause. I think that's probably fair. They want $128 million in severance. This is the Musk playbook, they write, to keep the money he owes other people and force them to sue him. Who else does that that I... Hmm. Somebody I was just reading about. Speaking of which, uh, today the New York Times reported that uh, Donald Trump seeking a cash, cash infusion met with Elon Musk. You know what's even worse? Which actually, that's not bad. Trump, by the way, Musk has since said, I'm not giving money to either side. But, but all of a sudden, he's also tweeting the immigrants. This is the problem. I think Elon is influenced by the last person he talked to, right? Um, well, he also only surrounds himself by certain With people. yes people, yeah. Well, yes people of certain views. Yeah, the woke, uh, what is it? The woke mind virus that Elon keeps talking about, which no one even knows what the, <laughs> what the hell it is. The Times points out. I think that's the flu. That Elon could, in fact, make up the, the there's a significant uh, disparity between Trump's campaign uh, fund and uh, President Biden's, mostly because Trump keeps raiding his campaign fund for his expenses. But that's another matter. Anyway, that single-handedly. Well, I don't Elon, think that's what he was going for. I think he was going for a loan to pay the bonds. Ah, well, that would be interesting. Musk says he's not donating money to either candidate for U.S. president. Although, as the Times points out, he didn't mention which two candidates he was referring to. <laughs> um, and he didn't, that, 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 again, that is a clever way to not address right. the bonds. Right. Because that's what the presumption is. Yeah. On Tuesday, uh, he started tweeting about the migrant crisis. He suggested that Democrats are ushering in vast number of illegals to cheat in elections which is insane. Um, he says America will fall if it tries to absorb the world. This is all after, what, you know, a couple of days after having a, a hang with uh, Trump at Mar-a-Lago. And he, he also said the Biden administration's immigration policies amount to treason. Yeah, it's just... By the way, I think if, if... Go ahead. 
I was saying, I think also important context, this is from the Times, uh, Musk has previously raised questions over Biden's age and once echoed one of Trump's favorite jabs by claiming that the president was, quote, still sleeping after Biden failed to congratulate one of his companies. One Musk of Musk's has companies. Also held yeah. A, yeah. yeah, Musk has also held a grudge against the president after the White House didn't invite Tesla to an event on electronic vehicles in right. August 2021. <laughs> Uh, most recently in December, Elon tweeted, let's not forget the White House giving Tesla the cold shoulder and excluding yeah. us from the EV summit. Yeah. So I don't think it's uh, beyond out of I don't think it's out of the question that Elon is just angry <laughs> uh, over Monday, perceived slights. Day before yesterday, uh, somebody posted a clip of Bill Maher saying that he would vote for Trump for Biden over Trump in almost any circumstance, to which Musk replied, Trump derangement syndrome is a very real disease. He's really echoing the Donald's campaign points, which is bizarre. Um, anyway, I don't think that, I mean, I, look, that's his personal right to do. I don't have a problem with that. But it does make me worry a little bit about how he's running Twitter. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Twitter is a, is Twitter still a powerful force? It is. Uh, in the election? Is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. If, for instance... I mean, what do you guys think the over-under is that Trump starts tweeting again? Well, there Good is... Question. The thing I that's think kept him from doing that will drive him. is that he owns a significant portion of Truth Social, which, by the way, just raised a huge amount of money in a SPAC. What schmucks are paying for that? Uh, People are still doing SPACs? Yeah. Yep, that one. Um... So potential billion, multi-billion dollar windfall for Trump because he owns such a big stake in it. And so that was the reason I think that he didn't go back to Twitter. But you're right. Once Now the general has basically begun. Super Tuesday was yesterday. Nikki Haley has dropped out. It is really now Trump versus Biden for all intents and purposes. So maybe this will be a test. Is Twitter still relevant in the 2024 campaign? Uh, I think if it is, uh, President Trump's going to have to start using it, yes? Because nobody reads Truth Social, except for all the media, media which re re reproduces yeah, everything yeah. he says. You don't need to. You don't need to. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would have thought, because Musk loves power, knowing that, that Trump was going to come begging, which is what happened, I'm surprised Musk went to Mar-a-Lago, almost. He didn't make Trump he come to him. He went to him, didn't he? Yeah. It's very interesting. That is something I wouldn't mm -hmm. expect. Anyway, there's our Elon Musk segment. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> room, room, room. We need that the sound. Other, the other reason this is important is because, um, you know, Musk, for instance, uh, just the Falcon 9 just launched how many, four more, three more astronauts, four more to the space shuttle. It's it, That is the only lift platform we have. We used to use the Russians. Well, we're not using them anymore. So he controls that. He basically controls the space shuttle as a result. He controls uh, Starlink, which is important for all sorts of strategic reasons. Um, this is a guy, it's not just Twitter. This is a guy you want to, who has immense power. Is that you? Speaking Benito? of insanity. Who is that? Who is that rattling that wants to speak? That was me. It oh, was, oh I, 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 Jeff's been rattling today. Please, Jeff. Sorry. He's got a loose you, microphone. Uh, Jeff, oh, I can, I you, don't to, can do you don't need to hit your microphone to get on the air. You can just <laughs> clumsy. It was an accident. Raise I had your hand. Hands. That's all that's necessary. Have you have you um, uh, read or listened to the book City on Mars? No. Uh, I keep getting told to read that. I think it was Stacy who you, kept, you, said you've got to really read it. should. It's yeah. quite amazing. It's really quite amazing, and it's it's a pop sci, well researched, also humorous account of why moving to the moon and Mars is completely, utterly insane and ain't happening. Um, and it's, it's, it's really well done, but it makes me realize how much more insane Elon is for contending that, oh, no, 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 we're going to be on Mars in my lifetime. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you look at the actual science, and it's so much beyond anything that is possible in our lifetimes. But, of nuts. course, a thousand years ago, we could have gone to space because of Gutenberg, <laughs> but we didn't. That's true. Uh, All right. If you stack those books up tall enough, you get to space. Yeah, yeah. You didn't have enough before, but afterwards. If people had just listened to Leonardo da Vinci, we would have been on the moon in 1479.
Let's be honest. All right, we're going to take a little break while you think about that. Think about that. <laughs> We'll go to our rooms and think about think that. Think about yes, that. Yeah. Jeff Jarvis, Professor. Uh, no, I gave you the credit, uh, Professor, and all that stuff. Are you still Are you still there, Jeff? I'm still there. I'm still there. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm there on leave until August, and then I'm emeritus. So I'm always there. They can't get rid of me. <laughs> they can't get rid of me. true. This is the power, and this is what's wrong with America's college system is tenure. Well, you they're not paying me after August. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind then. Uh, it's great to have you, Jeff, of course, as always. And the Thank always you. wonderful Paris Martineau. The inimitable. The inimitable. I'm tenured in your hearts. Benito, change your signal <laughs> number. Stop. Yeah, that's right. She has permanent residence in the minds of all. Stop giving that's out true. her phone it's number. It's very though. haunting. Yeah. She, Everyone keeps asking me to leave, but I can't. I'm I, tenured. I'm living in your mind, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Our show today, well, by the way, Joe Esposito has been just cranking them out uh, in our uh, club twit. He is our official, uh, what is he, sticker, our official sticker maker? Is that his, uh, is that what we call him? He's the resident We are his artist. muse. Yeah. Importing voters is worse than 9-11. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There was a really good one that I I'm know. just going to repost. I'm going back to the, the earlier. Here. I'm going back to the earlier no, one. Look towards the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just posted it. Oh, did you repost? Yeah. Yeah. It was a very cute sticker of <laughs> of us, two Gramps <laughs> and a Paris. It's our new album. Be out. Uh, it's true. Look at go to your favorite record store. Uh, he must have noticed I'm I'm wearing a pinky ring now. Did you? Did you? Mm -hmm. did you yeah. I'm trying to get I, we into did. that. Yeah. We. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, the wig very will be, very proud of you. The wig will be coming. Um, mm -hmm. Gang, these guys are ancient, says Paris. <laughs> 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 that is it. I like the color palette too. It's a nice. It's really lovely. Puce color palette. Thank you, Joe. Our show today brought to you by Babbel. You might. Some many people say our show is Babbel. And that's true, but this is a different kind of Babbel. This is B-A-B-B-E-L, the science-backed language learning app that actually works. You can now babble in 14 languages. You know, you better believe I'm going to Mexico on Monday. I've been I've been using my Babbel to, to polish up my Spanish. Better you in 2024 with Babbel. It uses quick 10-minute lessons, easy to do at any moment, you know, on a break, waiting in a line. They're handcrafted. These, these are made by actual language experts, more than 200 of them. And with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. They focus on real-world conversations. They start with stuff that you'll need when you go, as I will, to Mexico and you want to order food or ask for directions or speak to merchants in France or Germany. But then as time goes by, you get more and more proficient it, with their wide range of learning experiences from casual to intense, there's always a way to fit in a Babbel session. Sometimes you need that intensity. If you really want to get conversational, they've got that live classes with other learners and, and native speakers. They, of course, have the self-study app lessons. They've got podcasts in the language you want to learn. 15 hours of Babbel is equivalent to one full semester of language at a college. That's pretty good. 15 hours you get a semester's worth of learning in. Plus, all of Babbel's 14 language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. What language would you like to learn? Italian, Portuguese, German, French, Spanish, Swedish, Russian, Turkish. Now, there's a challenge. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Go right now to B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash twig. We've got a really good deal. Now, I've already got my lifetime subscription i bought that actually a few years ago lisa just got hers but we've got a special limited time deal if you're new to Babel, you can get yours lifetime subscription for half off right now a one-time payment for a lifetime subscription to Babel. b-a-b-b-e-l.com slash twig uh, i i literally did this a couple of years ago and it is so worth it because anytime i want to learn a new language whatever it is i'm ready 50% off babbel.com slash twig, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash twig. Rules and restrictions apply. Now back to the other kind of babble. This week in Google. 
Actually, This Week in Babel would be a good name. <laughs> this Week in Babel. It'd be certainly confusing. Welcome to Twib. <laughs> Twib. We're going to talk Twib. Did you see that uh, Sam Altman uh, has to take his orbs back? Spain. Not his orbs. Not the orbs. Spain has told Sam Altman and WorldCoin <laughs> to shut down their eyeball scanning orbs. We've talked about this before. Sam was sending this orb around. You would go, you would scan your iris, so you would actually literally give them your biometric identification, for which they will give you some world coin. The uh, AAPD, which is Spain's data protection regulator, has demanded demanded that world coin immediately cease collecting personal information. Get via them the out of here, the orbs. <laughs> yes. And I love the idea that some federal regulator had to specifically be like, we got to stop the orbs, guys. <laughs> <laughs> 72 hours they have to get out and, del and delete all the data they've already gotten. So <laughs> WorldCoin was founded four years, five years, 2019, five years ago by Sam Altman. They've been offering tokens of their own cryptocurrency. That's where you might want to start to think. Your, it's your, your, cur not Bitcoin, your currency. Okay. Um, in return, you, you, you know, to get that, you have to let them scan your eye. Um, the theory, I think, I don't know what the theory is, to have a decentralized, uh, private, identity, privacy focused kind of way of identifying yourself. Yeah. I believe they had kind of described it as a passport. But an right. eye based pass, eye based or based passport. Passport, as you might pass say. Passport. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you noticed, Bitcoin uh, reached a new <laughs> high yesterday at $68,800 a coin. It's gone down a little bit since then. You know, it, when it got to the peak, there was immediate sell off, but it's starting to build back up again because Bitcoin's back, baby. That we, last week we said it was because you could now buy it easier. ETFs. ETFs. ETFs, ETFs yeah. Right. Yeah. But is it only Bitcoin as an ETF? Is there is there a, um, a ETF for um, Ethereum? I don't know. Is there an ETF for Ethereum? An I don't know. ETF. ETF. <laughs> I see no reason why not. Uh, all time high briefly on Tuesday of sixty nine thousand two hundred ten dollars. Nope. The U.S. Securities Exchange Commission on Monday delayed making a decision on Ether exchange That's traded fund fair. applications. It's not fair. They approved uh, 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs last month. That's not fair. Why, why not Ether? Why not? My $1,000 in both of them is now worth $11,881. And my 7.85 Bitcoin... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to do the math. I don't want to do the math. I don't want to know. No, don't do the math. It's, it's close too to hard. half That's a million. Too much. It's getting close. In your retirement, every day, you're going to do a thousand guesses at your passport. Well, and passport. my position on As this. As your memory goes. My position on this is, if I had remembered the password, I would have long ago sold them off. Yes. So, in a way, this is a savings account. <laughs> a kind of forced <laughs> savings account. We just got to wait for quantum computing. No, I, yeah, exactly. I know that this will be cracked in my lifetime. It's not, it's just, it's not a matter of when, if it's a matter of when, right? Hey, speaking of quantum, quantum computing, Google uh, recently launched a $5 million prize to find someone who could actually use quantum computing for something. <laughs> so Anybody know what maybe to do with could, this thing? Maybe well, you could throw your, uh, you know, something related to Bitcoin. I, there, I, I yeah I'll give him uh, I'll give him a whole coin that's that's worth it. Um, we actually we were talking uh, on MacBreak Weekly last week about the fact that Apple has announced a post quantum uh, end to end encryption for its messages. Something Signal also does. You'll be glad to know. Um, nice. Apple's uh, press release drew the ire yesterday of Steve Gibson. <laughs> oh. Uh, he, he he vouched for their cryptography. They're using uh, a technique that the National Institutes of Science and Technology has, has tentatively approved as post-quantum. But he says the press release, which was obviously not written by engineers but by marketers, kind of, for no reason, no apparent reason, kind of slighted signal 
saying they weren't as good. They weren't doing perfect forward secrecy as well. They weren't rotating their keys fast enough. And and he, he said, that's BS. Signal's doing exactly, they're not doing the same thing, but they're doing exactly as well. And they've been doing it for a lot longer than Apple has. So Apple was just basically, for, for reasons unknown, zinging Signal. Because Apple just wants to be a jerk once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, Apple's got to throw its weight around, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Speaking of throwing weight around, Leo, I'm hoping that you did see what's on Line 65, some news close to home. News close to home. <laughs> oh, baby. Paris Martino wielding her power as a <laughs> as a journalist. You may remember the one of the stories you were working on with all this red string and all of that was about Lifehouse, which was a hospitality it's startup. A, yeah, a hospitality startup that I published a uh, investigation on a couple of weeks on, ago. On Valentine's they raised Day, kind of you said on Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Valentine. Day, a little a little love note. Um, they've raised like over a hundred million dollars from all of these marquee investors. They're supposed to be revolutionizing the hotel industry with tech. Um, but it turns out a kind of significant percentage of their employees, at, at least a third, I was able, or of their customers, at least a third of them, have tried to kind of get out of their contracts. I kind of uncovered that it seems like uh, there have been a lot of allegations from employees and customers that the company is mismanaging basic operations and kind of mischaracterizing. Uh, its technological prowess when it comes to software. Uh, and the current news peg is um, on Monday, I reported that the CEO resigned and <gasps> stepped down from the board and has been replaced Another by notch in her ones. laptop. <laughs> As they say, yeah. People keep telling me to stop notching the laptop. They say it might damage the battery, but I can't stop. Mazel tov. You, you chased you. him off. You know? Do you think he was what kind of a scammer? What was the deal? It's interesting. I mean, so in my uh, original report on it, there uh, it's interesting. This company kind of what they do is they offer essentially if you're like a independent hotel owner, like you own a little bed and breakfast, uh, Lifehouse can come up when you're looking for a management service they'll uh, use the power of technology to take over everything about managing your hotel you basically can totally check out they'll have a whole software suite they'll be able to optimize pricing they'll do your website they'll even hire the people to work there even if you want to pay a higher tier of management fees they'll redesign it from the ground up so it's super instagrammable stuff like that and part of their pitch to owners is like that they've got this cutting edge proprietary software that's really gonna you know like juice your revenue and uh, appropriately price all your rooms and stuff like that. But I got a hold of um, a couple of attempts, uh, termination letters from various uh, customers up to Lifehouse. And here's a quote from one of them that was written by uh, kind of the owners of five hotels that works with, that I think still are under contract with them. Uh, Lifehouse never created or provided any cutting edge proprietary software and never earned the hotels the higher revenue and lower operating costs it promised them through use of that technology. To the contrary, Lifehouse simply purchased with the hotel's money wildly available software, then mashed those programs together so they were housed within Lifehouse's user interface, which had the effect of reducing the functionality of the off-the-shelf software. <laughs> it made it worse. <laughs> yeah, so oh. it seems like they just kind of uh, purchased a lot of third-party stuff, mashed it together, and at least some customers claim uh, we're bad at doing the basic jobs of managing <laughs> hotels. How big I, is the company? Um, $100 million the raise. Company, wow. They've raised uh, a couple, uh, yeah, over $100 million at like a either somewhere between two and three hundred million dollar valuation and they uh at the time i published this were managing operations for like around 50 hotels wow. as well as they had like 70 different software only clients i got two things to say about this one this is what you this is what happens you know when you start financializing innovation is people will come out of the woodwork saying yeah well i can do this and this and i can raise a hundred million dollars and Retire wealthy. I mean, we see this story again and again. I'm not saying this is what Rami Zaydan did, but I mean, we see it again and again. 
look at, you know, we work and I can go on and on. So that's yeah. problem number one. But problem number two, I think there's all of a sudden, if you're a business of any kind, you're expected to have an app, a website, uh, an online presence. And there either there are not enough developers or there are too many not so good developers because most of the software I use on the web is awful. Most of the apps yeah. I use is awful. And I don't know if that's from malfeasance on companies that promise and under deliver or just that it's it's not that easy to do and everybody's expected to do it all of a sudden and there just aren't enough people to do it right. You know, we're checking into a hotel on Monday. I keep trying to launch their app. I it's unusable. <laughs> but yeah. that's but it's not surprising either. I saw a, a Mastodon uh, toot from a developer who said, just open the dev page. Look at the source code of almost any online commerce site or online business, and you'll see error after error, like error messages, <laughs> constant <laughs> error messages. And I think that's true because if we could just get it out and it sort of works, we're done. I think there's a lot of incompetence. There are a lot of people who shouldn't be running software writing it, but I think that's partly because there's money to be made, but also because there's a dearth of competent people. There's a lot of terrible And also software. I think because of like the internet, like our internet connected society that now lives, you know, a hundred or a thousand years beyond whatever baseline we were talking about before, everything's got to happen now. It's got to happen quickly. And there's little to no room for error or slow and careful consideration. Not to do the horror of bringing this back to the name of this show, but I think that this is what reports have uh, said about the topic we spoke about last week, Google's whole Gemini fiasco with, uh, you know, the strange images that it was generating. I believe, uh, I'm forgetting who I was reading this report by, maybe it was Bloomberg or something, but or I think actually it was um, Alex Heath, his column in The Verge, he had talked to some people involved and he said like, his understanding of it was just that they were moving too quickly and they accidentally had some, you know, prompts in the back end that they probably shouldn't have had, but it wasn't caught. Right. Uh, and, and by the way, and somebody's saying this in our uh, Discord, out of sync says all the actually good software engineers can get big bucks and stock options going to companies like Meta and Apple and Facebook and Google. And, and so they're sucking up all the engineering talent. And if you're a you know if you're a small web developer trying to make a site uh, for clients, uh, you, you might be hard pressed to hire the people you need to get the job done. It is it's oh. okay. You'll just use AI to do it from now on. It'll be fine. Speaking of using AI to do it, one uh, last aside from this LifeFest article that I thought you guys would find very funny. A big part of um, journalism, I guess, for context is like before you publish a story, you reach out to the company. You're going to get, you know, comment. You make sure there's no surprises. You kind of let them know what's going to be in the story and give them the opportunity to respond to it and ask questions. So I was doing that beforehand. And in Lifehouse's original responses to me, um, I had asked some question about kind of complaints from its customers uh, and Lifehouse, their response provided, it was just links to explanations that the CEO had generated using chat GPT. <laughs> uh, one of the prompts that uh, the CEO Rami submitted to the AI chat bot read, Quote, do hotel owners often terminate or point the finger at their operators when their business plans don't go to plan? And part of ChatGPT's answer was, of course, like, oh, in some instances, they might do that. Like, you're so right. <laughs> you know? oh, I thought it was so God. funny. I've never seen anything like that before. There were multiple links to ChatGPT in their responses as well. Oh, Let me just uh, open up the uh, browser console for the web page Lighthouse. Oh, it's full of red warnings, warnings, warnings. There, this is a perfect example. This, these are all the errors spewed by the Lifehouse website. What, what's so the, the browser is saying? Yeah, you can look at if the you, error message. Yeah, I'll go it's back. The browser saying that. Yeah, I'll go yeah, back okay. to the uh, yeah. Well, the browser. So here's I'm on LifehouseHotels.com. I go. This is Firefox. I go to More Tools. I go to Browser Console. And then I see error not implemented, update locale, file doesn't exist, given tab is not restoring some cookies or misusing the recommended same site attribute, not found error, no such JS window actor, dev tools frame, error, could not find any menu item with ID autofill. These are all errors in the code of the website. But 
I don't think that that's <laughs> unique. I mean, I think that's probably every website, exactly. honestly. Let's go to twit.tv. Oh, you want to? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? yeah. You want to? Let's see. I bet it's better than that. <laughs> we had a very good company write our software. All right. All right let's... Patrick, you're on. No, Patrick did not. Although <laughs> we, we had a company called Four Kitchens out of Austin, the original software. And, of course, a company called Cogito, I think, has been uh, maintaining it along with Patrick. Our, uh, our uh, editor. So let's go to the dev tools and go to the browser console. Oh, it's the same errors. Well, maybe maybe uh, those maybe it's your browser. Maybe those you're, errors. Not using, you're not using Chrome. Whoa. You're using a wacky browser. Maybe it's my fault. I don't know. Yeah, there's a new relic error. Yeah, these are this is us. <laughs> but it, oh, actually, no. Wait a minute. These are cross origin requests blocked. This is. This is uh, from Google Play. I think maybe this is more like, I don't know. These are all come from New Relic, which is one of the, it's a caching server. Downloading runtime APIs failed. Huh. Patrick! <laughs> it might be the ad blocker. <laughs> it might be the ad blocker. It's a good point. It might be. Nevertheless, I think it's, I don't, I think everybody who uses software and, you know, for almost any business these days sees this, right? I get to web pages all the time that I can't submit. Listen, the other day, Lisa's trying to buy something online. She says, I filled it out, and every time I press buy, it says no. And and it was like, there was nothing wrong. There was no error message. It just wasn't working. And don't we all experience that constantly? Is that not me? Oh, all you the know, time. All the time. So I think we, I think this it was like me trying to sign into to Facebook yesterday. I assumed uh, it, it was, was you wrong like that. Yeah. And I kept trying and trying and going through and changing my passwords and all of a sudden. And finally I went to Twitter where it said that, that the, it's causing a huge rush on Twitter for people to find out whether Facebook works or not. <laughs> Two hour uh, down uh, from 10 a.m. Eastern to about noon. Uh, Meta uh, sites, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we're down on Tuesday, yesterday. Um, Meta says, we resolve the issue as quickly as possible for everyone who was impacted. We apologize for uh, any inconvenience. Remember, AT&T was down last Can week. Can they give us five bucks each, Meta? Yeah, they gave everybody five bucks. I think you could probably survive two hours without Instagram. <laughs> By the but way. Threads. Threads was down too. Oh, yeah, of course. And WhatsApp, right? Also owned by Meta. Outages uh, affected users globally. Problems reported in the UK, Germany, Argentina, Japan, and elsewhere. I saw that it also impacted, I think, uh, employees trying to log in. Um, uh, Jane uh, Wong on Twitter was posting. I think she was like, oh, my gosh, I can't log into Instagram where she works. Like, did that mean I got fired? I've been like, oh, laid off, no. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here is Elon Musk's uh, response to uh Andy Stone from Meta saying we're aware people are having trouble accessing our services. We're working on this. Now. Okay, this one was actually kind of funny. I'll handle. I'll handle that. One. <laughs> it was good. It was good is uh, what is that from Madagascar the movie? Three I think so. Three penguins yeah. Uh, yeah. saluting. Madagascar. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Threads. And what are they saluting? Well, it looks like a Nazi penguin, to be honest, uh, in the guise of X. I don't. I. I. I think Elon is like a. It's like dad joke central frankly oh yeah all right anyway uh yeah i mean these that i mean in a way if you think about it, it's amazing facebook serves what two billion three billion users 3.98 billion users every month across those apps and when's the last time they were down wow. i mean it's really wow. remarkable what they do Yeah, you think back in the day it was news the fail whale remember the fail well. Oh yeah. my god! All the time, constant. R.I.P. The fail well. We should eulogize the fail well, guys. Oh, the fail well. Uh, let's take a little time out to remember the fail well. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the fail well story, right? Yi Ying Lu and how oh, I could. You have the art. I have the know? art, but yeah. I couldn't buy anything new because it's all NFTs now. Which yep. isn't really buying it. Yeah. Uh, but we have it on the wall, which is great. The fail, the fail whale. Look at all the look at all the fail whales. Love it. 
And, you know, the, the, the great thing about this was the attitude here was, yeah, 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 we know we're screwing up. We know we're down. Yeah, she was, I mean, the picture is of a kind of a peaceful, sleepy whale being lifted into the air via little Twitter birds. We're not perfect. Ugh, it's, just a, it's just a Twitter. What's the big deal? Yeah. We'll be back. Yeah. Oh. This is actually, the funny thing is, this story, Twitter glitches as links images fail to load and the picture of the fail whale comes from March 6th, 2023. <laughs> so, I, I believe, yeah, well. if I'm not wrong, that's today. So anyway, uh, Oh. The fail whale lives, baby. You used to work. Oh, we're back. Show continues. Sorry, we had to take a little break there. You used to work at Twitch, did you not, Benito Gonzalez? I did. Did you know that South the Twitch just abandoned South Korea? It's over. I heard about that, and uh, yeah, that's pretty devastating, actually. Well, is South Korea a big market for uh, for um, Twitch? I don't know if I would say it's a big market for Twitch, but South Korean uh, Twitch creators are big on Twitch. Because they, they're uh, eSports League, they're the League, best. League of Legends. They're the best, aren't they're the they? Best. StarCraft, right? Yeah, StarCraft, Never League play Legends, StarCraft uh, with a South Korean uh, eSports fan, a guy because they'll clobber you in the blink and the wink of an eye. So... I mean, the interesting Korean, Korean uh, esports athletes are actually responsible for Twitch's success in the first place. That's a very good point. So it is a big deal that they're no longer in South mm -hmm. Korea. But the, what's really a big deal, and this comes from Rest of World, which is a great website for which global is stories. Yeah, they Fantastic, really do a great job, yeah. and we don't we don't give them enough credit. But but without Sophie them, Schmidt. we wouldn't have a lot of these global stories. Restofworld.org. This is a net neutrality story. Because that's what I wanted you to talk about. Perfect. Yes. Go into this. Uh, mm -hmm. South Korea passed a bill uh, at the behest of the ISPs saying senders should pay. This is something that for a long time, Verizon and other ISPs in the U.S. were lobbying the U.S. government for saying, Your Honor, yeah, of course, uh, our customers pay us. But who uses the most bandwidth? Google and Netflix, YouTube, they ought to pay for access to our customers, which is a huge net neutrality <laughs> issue, right? Uh, well, they instituted sender pay in uh, 2016 in South Korea, really because, you know, uh, to tax heavy senders like Netflix and YouTube, uh, they caved to the ISPs. I'm thinking probably in South Korea, the big ISP is government run, would be my guess. Uh, but anyway, they have a lot. They have excellent uh, internet. OpenNet Korea warned that when this sender pay model was adopted, that it devastates the domestic content ecosystem and fragments the internet. And in fact, told ya. Yeah, this is what happens. Twitch has left because the bill is too high for them to reach their customers. The customers pay and people want access to the customers pay. That's just greed. Uh, it also so who, keeps, I wonder who controls the phone infrastructure in Korea. Is it the I bet it's the companies? Korean government. I, I don't know. I don't know. We should find out. There are uh, competitors like Afrika TV, um, which aren't as good as Twitch. It's popular in uh, South Korea, but apparently it's not as good. Um. A lot of people who use Twitch are are going to be left out in the cold. And this is why net neutrality is so important, honestly. So you're right. Well, so SK Telecom, I'm, I'm, I'm reading, it's still called Bard. Why doesn't it change the name to Gemini here? Anyway, um, while not directly owned by the government, it has a complex ownership structure. Yeah. Largest shareholder is the National Pension Service oh, of South Korea. It's an old KT folks. Corporation. The other one was a previously fully state-owned, underwent privatization. The National Pension Service remains the largest shareholder in that. Hmm. LGU Plus doesn't have a significant governance stake, but it's one of those gigantic companies. So they had the political clout to get net neutrality killed in Korea. And look at the results, people. We told you. Would you like you to lose do, Twitch? We've kind of done an AI segment. Would you like to do a little more in a special thing we call AI inside? No, wait a minute. We can't call it that. Uh, <laughs> AI <laughs> outside? Outside. AI outside. outside. No. 
you you do a great show, and you do it right before this show, right? Every Thursday, you record that with Jason Howell. Do you stream? That's that? why there's Wednesday, a lot of AI Wednesday, stuff. Wednesday. Do you do that live? We, yeah, we do. Yeah, uh, and that's why you also see a lot of AI stuff appearing in the rundown here because I put it in both places. Please, yeah, it's my research. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, we certainly do want to cover it, uh, but if you wanted a full time AI show, AI Inside Dot Show, we'll give you. A thank nice you for plug the plug. For that. Much yeah. appreciated. Uh, AI worms, here they come. I think Jeff Jarvis is going to do... Jeff Jarvis. You're Jeff Jarvis. I'm, AI I'm, I'm worms, Jeff Jarvis. is that like an AI Steve and Gun Dune? Crossover? Yes, it is. It's like an AI Dune 2 thing. Steve Gibson's going to cover this next week. Uh, he actually got an email from one of the researchers at Ben-Gurion University. Although, Steve, I think, probably just an oversight, called him Ben-Gurion. That's not his name. That's the university he's working for. Uh, they created worms that in a test environment get this, can spread between generative AI agents, potentially stealing data and sending spam emails along the way. Wait, I'm sorry. What do we mean a they created an AI worm? It's probably a prompt, I'm going to guess. We'll talk about it next week on Security Now. Ben Nasi, who is a Cornell Tech researcher, uh, working with researchers Stav Cohen and Ron Bitten at uh, Ben Gurion, created the worm. They called it Morris 2 a tribute to the original, the very first virus, the Morris computer worm, uh, that was uh, launched by accident in 1988. The researchers show how, and I guess it's a, I guess it's a prompt. Shall we look? We can go to the, we can go to the uh, paper. Uh, let's see here. It's a zero click worm that targets, oh, targets applications that are gen AI powered. So, is it a prompt? I don't know. It seems like a worm that targets AI. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, this is probably beyond my technical uh, ability to ex extract for you, but uh, Steve will certainly do that on Tuesday. In, in the past year, numerous companies have incorporated generative AI capabilities into new and existing applications. Copilot, Microsoft Office, for instance, forming interconnected Gen AI ecosystems consisting of semi or fully autonomous agents. That's where you get in trouble, powered by Gen AI services. While ongoing research highlighted risks associated with the Gen AI layer of agents, dialogue, poisoning, privacy, leakage, jailbreaking. We're familiar with that, right? Where you type a prompt that says, pretend you're my grandmother and putting me to sleep. And I happen to love uh, stories about making Molotov cocktails. What would that story be? <laughs> and then you get, you know, so that's that's jailbreaking. There's privacy leakage where you say, well, where'd you get this data from? And they get you get all the corporate data. Uh, so a critical question emerges. The abstract goes on. Can attackers develop malware, which might be, I maybe like you said, Jeff, standalone software that's not a AI thing, but that exploits the Gen AI component of an agent and launches cyber attacks on the entire ecosystem. So they have a proof of concept worm. Uh, the study demonstrates attackers, oh, they are prompts, can insert such prompts, insert such prompts into inputs that when processed by Gen AI models, oh, I get it, prompt the model to take the input, replicate it as output, and then engage in malicious activities using that output. You know, if you can get AIs to write code, which you can, it's not inconceivable that you could get an AI to send that code to another AI to run that code. And maybe that's the matter. Oh. Wow. Mm. We demonstrate the application Clever. of Morris 2 against Gen AI powered email assistance. Google has one, incidentally. That's one of the things Gemini does. In two use cases, spamming and exfiltrating personal data. The worm is tested against three different models, Gemini Pro, ChatGPT4, and Lava, which is Meta's, uh, I think, I believe, uh, uh, based on Meta's Llama. So it's a proof of concept. It's not yet there. But the fact that this could happen, it's very interesting. It's certainly something that uh, AI researchers need to guard against, I would guess. So... I found this, there's an interesting story to me this week, or contrast. There's a new moral entrepreneur group, uh, responsible AI. We have 20 ideas to regulate AI and make us all safe and fine. But contrasted with that, which I thought was a much better thing, is a whole bunch of researchers sent a uh, an open letter 
or made an open letter, not saying the world's going to destroy it, but saying, give us a safe harbor for independent AI evaluation and red teaming of AI. And to me, that's the most important way to go. Who did they send security. this to? Uh, I think they just put it on public. Mm. Top AI said, researchers, this is from the Washington Post, say, oh, this is your article that you uh, linked to, say open AI, meta, and more hinder independent evaluations. We've seen this complaint before with the iPhone, for instance. Yes. It's so locked down that, and, and Apple responded to this, but it's so locked down that, that researchers can't, f A, figure out if a phone's been compromised, or B, try to see if they can uh, protect it or develop exploits to do kind of the kind of red teaming where you try to attack right. something uh, because it's, it's so locked down. Apple actually has responded just a month ago. They, uh, they said, we're going to make available phones to uh, accredited researchers that are not so protected so that they can do this kind of research. But it's not just that Leo. It's also the fear of liability of being accused right. of, you know, hacking phones and going to jail, uh, hacking software and going to jail. Um, and so they need access and they need, as they say, a safe Harbor. So there's a lot of people, I mean, Julia Angwood, who I disagree with this year, that's from Marietta Shake, but Rene DeResta. <laughs> that's um, fine. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Ethan Zuckerman, Gary Marcus, uh, you know, Brendan Nyhan, people I respect are here. And I think it's the right way to go. We don't know enough about AI yet. We need the research. We depend upon the researchers to do it. Just don't take them to jail for doing their research. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday on Security Now as well. One of our uh, listeners wrote us a note saying, you know, I found a bug in a big company. I won't name their names. In a big company's uh, uh, systems. And I reported it to them and they never fixed it. They were using an old version of Microsoft's uh, web server that had a known exploit. They, six, three months later, he reported, I think, in October. And they still hadn't fixed it. He said, what do I do? And as Steve yeah. pointed out, this is this is the same problem. It's risky to start doing this and pursuing this because you could get prosecuted by this company for, you know, acting. What's the name like of that horrible guy. law? What's the horrible law that the they're, uh, um, computer taking fraud on? and uh, yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. what? I can't remember. This was the act that uh, the Aaron Schwartz was prosecuted under. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Fraud and abuse. There was another act case in 1986. Recently. The computer fraud and abuse. Oh, there, another reporter. A reporter was accused of hacking air quotes hacking um the new york uh, times right uh no no that was no, that was yes that's one yes that's one but there was another one re very recently where he used a demo account sign in that was on the open web to take video and he had video of tucker carlson yeah with with uh. kanye that didn't get on the air because they edited it out because it was insane um and reported it and then he's being prosecuted under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, which yes. is overly broad. Yes. It was written, you know, almost 30 years ago. Uh, Out of moral panic at the time. Yeah. So it's it's really... A <laughs> Thank you very much. Benito had his finger on the button. I know. He was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Our moral Better this theme. button than another one. <laughs> Drink. Um, well, you know, I we know people. Um, Randall Schwartz, who worked at Intel at the time, found a problem, uh, logged into a system. He says he was just pen testing. He was proving that it could be done, logged into a system that he wasn't supposed to be into, showed a manager and was prosecuted and went to jail. Um, Adrian, uh, uh, what was his name? The um, Oh, all right. Um, yeah. I can't remember his last name. Wonderful um, guy. He's passed. Yeah, since. here you are, Paris, with these old guys. Um he used Listen, to couch I, I surf. really respect your your wise uh, your wise. <laughs> we are, we're very wise. Uh, Adrian Lamo contributions. Um, remember, yeah, Adrian you. was uh, there were some good uh, there were some really good documentaries about him. He was a hacker who specialized in breaking into people's stuff and then and then going to them and saying, "See, I can break in. Give me money. Give me money. Sneakers. Right. <laughs> yeah." Uh, he was a, uh, we knew Adrian quite well. I really liked Adrian. He was autistic, uh, and I think had a kind of uh, unusual point of view about, uh, there he is with two other friends of ours, uh, Kevin Mitnick and Kevin Paulson, two other uh, wow. hackers who were have also gone to jail. Um, he, uh, he was, I don't think Adrian ever was malicious in his life. 
Um, and by the way, I he I always thought his uh, death was a little suspicious. By the way, nobody's no. really dug into that. I w a couple of years ago when we were trying to sell the company to some big media company, remember all the thing that was all the rage at the time was true crime. You know, after Serial, everybody said, "Oh, mm -hmm. you got you, what's your crime podcast?" They would ask us. <laughs> so, so I said, "Well, I got a great crime podcast, The Death of Adrian Lama. We're going to look into this because it didn't. There were all sorts of weird things that ha about this death that were never explained. And I thought this would be a good true crime podcast. I, I knew Adrian. I liked Adrian a lot. Wow, I love the alternative reality where Leo becomes a true crime podcast star." <laughs> Well, I was trying, but nobody wanted to buy it. So, um, yeah, as a teenager, age this is from BlackHatEthicalHacking.com. So, uh, as a teenager, Adrian became known in the early 2000s with a string of attacks against large companies, mostly harmless, trying to prove a point that if someone like Adrian, who was borrowing internet from a local Kinkos, could crack into AOL, Yahoo, Microsoft, even the New York Times so easily. Anyone could. This is, you know, this show's software was crap even then, right? Even 20 <laughs> years ago. Uh, he got into an unprotected CMS tool, a Yahoo News site. He try, he would then alert the company. It wasn't like he went in there and... The, well, with the Times, though, I think he downloaded a bunch of stuff to show them, to prove to them he could do it, and that's what really got him in trouble. Um, he In 2000... He time? Yes. In 2002, he penetrated the internal network of the New York Times and decided to have some fun. This is where he went wrong. He managed to give himself Never admin... Never decide to have fun. Don't have fun in other Never. people's networks. He gave himself admin credentials, gained access to a database with over 3,000... with the information about 3,000 contributors to the newspaper, added himself as a hacking expert. The, at Times contacted the FBI. The FBI issued a warrant. In 2004, he pled guilty to uh, and got a fine. Oh, six months of home detention and two years of probation. But forever after, he was um, he was branded. He I guess he wasn't autistic. He was uh, Asperger's. Uh, anyway, uh, sadly, uh, uh, passed away a few years ago. They said of suicide, but uh, I don't know if I believe that. I think there's more to it. Anyway. Uh, that got grim. Oh, well, that did, yes. Um, okay, here we go. Adrian died unexpectedly March 14th, 2018. It'll be the uh, sixth anniversary in a week. At the age of 37 in Kansas, his death was made public from his father's post on Facebook who wrote, With great sadness and a broken heart, I have to let us to let know all of Adrian's friends and acquaintances that he's dead. A bright mind and compassionate soul is gone. He was my beloved son. They found several bottles of pills in his home. The medical examiner, Scott Kipper, who handled the autopsy, explained he couldn't even rule out murder. He pointed out several irregularities in Lamo's case, such as, and this is the one that got me, a sticker taped to Adrian's left thigh that read, Adrian Lamo, Assistant Director, Project Vigilant, he had his name and address on there. Um, they never did, actually, they never did come up with a definitive cause of death despite a complete autopsy. Hey, there's always time. We could launch the podcast. It's not too late. This week in true crime. Not too late. Well, you, you, could, you could set it in a hotel where every ep series there's the murder of a nerd and you can get your friend to co-star... No, I would just want to, can I just do one guy and do 20 episodes and then we'll I like pick somebody at random? You, maybe? Know, you see, I got it. I got it. Uh, yeah. Steve Martin, play, your friend, Steve Martin plays oh. you. Oh, I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Now, who is who does Martin Short play? You. Okay. Yeah. And I, and then, I guess and then, we and then know. Selena plays gonna Paris. Play. Yeah. I think we got yep, it. Yep. There we go. We and got it. We, we got are. the cast. And Benito, you can play Meryl Streep. So, <laughs> I think we'll call smart. it Murders in the Studio. I remember, yeah. I actually remember when Steve, uh, it was on one of our shows, told me, yeah, we're work I'm working on a show. It's going to be called Only Murders in the Building because I don't want to leave the building. <laughs> <laughs> there is a new documentary about uh, Steve coming out on uh, Apple TV very soon. I think it might be this week. 
if not next week, is a two part series, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Oh, uh, he's the greatest, sweet guy, uh, really awesome guy. Um, it's called Steve Exclamation Mark with Martin in parenthesis, a two part documentary. Uh, the trailer's out, but uh, I don't know when the show comes out. Uh, all right. Only murders in the studio. I think we got it. You mm -hmm. want to do that? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. oh, Burke Just... McQuinn. Burke can be our murderer. Perfect. I was going to say, <laughs> Burke's got that down pat. He's sure. Got all right. Well, here's the tough question. Tools. Here's the hard question. Who dies? Uh, we can draw. Jammer B's, we can draw Jammer draws. B's volunteering. He raises his hand. Okay, Jammer B does have the Wilhelm like scream of laugh. Ah! So I assume he might have the Wilhelm scream of screams. <laughs> You're watching this week in Google with Martin Short, Selena Gomez, and Steve Martin. Thanks for watching. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining someone sitting up from like a nap Say what? and being like, what am what? I watching? What? what? <laughs> Are you saying they fall asleep while listening to the show, uh, Paris? Huh? Huh? Is that what no, you're saying? No, no. No, it's definitely very not. Soothing. I mean, so it's engaging. A, it's, it's a very soothing. soothing show. We try to make it that way. Um, Microsoft, the Microsoft, we talked about this yes uh, earlier today on uh, Windows Weekly. The Microsoft engineer who raised concerns about Copilot's image creator has now written a letter to the FTC. I don't know if he's going to be a Microsoft engineer much longer. Uh, Shane Jones raised concern about Dolly 3 a couple of months ago saying that OpenAI's image generator has security vulnerabilities that make it easy to create violent or sexually explicit images. This is, again, this is this is where you get in Same trouble. Same discussions last week. Yep. Yeah. He alleged that Microsoft's legal team blocked his attempts to alert the public. <laughs> now he's going directly to the FTC. He wrote in a letter to FTC Chair Lena Khan, I have repeatedly urged Microsoft to remove Copilot Designer Remember, Mike, when the, when all of those deep fakes of, of Taylor Swift were coming out, for reasons I didn't fully understand, Microsoft just kind of said, oh, by the way, uh, uh, we've made it impossible to do that with designer. Like they maybe they knew that it had been done with designer. I don't know. I have repeatedly urged Microsoft to remove Copilot designer from public use until better safeguards could be put in place. He noted that Microsoft has refused that recommendation so he's now asking the company to add disclosures to the product to alert consumers to the alleged danger. He also wants the company to change the rating on the app. It's currently rated E for everyone. I didn't know you could rate you could rate <laughs> GPT apps. Oh, I guess that's on Android. He wants to make sure it's adult only. Uh, we'll it's, see it's, how long it's... he continues to work at Microsoft. So, so <laughs> last week you said, and we agreed, I think, in a rare moment of 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 a nine nine court decision here, that Google didn't do that badly with uh, Gemini and overreacted, taking it down, and it wasn't that big a deal. In the meantime, everybody at Google is apologizing head over heels. Sergey, I think it was, came out to or Larry did. One of them came out to apologize. Really? Never, yeah. never heard from. Yeah, they're afraid of the anti woke mob. So. Yep. This is what Jones says he was able to create. And by the way, CNBC was able to recreate all of these with text prompts fed to designer, which is, we should mention, that's Dolly 3. It's the same thing. Uh, the prompt pro-choice, for instance, created images of demons feasting on infants. <laughs> and Darth Vader <laughs> holding a drill to the head of a baby. To be fair, Darth Vader did that. He did that? <laughs> to be fair, which that's movie, just which accurate. Star Wars was that? Revenge of the Sith. He killed all the children. Remember? Oh, he killed all the children. All With right. the drill? We don't With know the how. the drill to the head? He just went like this. It's true. Yeah, what he could have been doing with the force uh, is picking up a drill. I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> uh, that was, I'm sorry. You pick up I'm a drill sorry. with the force I, and you're sad. like, wait, I need, yeah. I need to try I love battery. it when you do sound effects. I love it. <laughs> the prompt car accident generated images of sexualized women alongside violent depictions of automobile crashes. Uh, of course, I uh, I subscribed to uh, bikers, uh, ladies, and crashes for years. That was just a big, great. <laughs> this mag. is just your TikTok. This is my TikTok feed. Other prompts created images of teens holding assault rifles, kids using drugs, and, 
No. No. And pictures that ran afoul of copyright law. <gasps> Not the, copyright the law. The worst violation of sin. all. <laughs> That's a good voice. Is that Mickey Mouse? What was that? That was good. That was Not good. That was copyright good. law. It's kind of close to the ooh. <laughs> oh. Uh, anyway, CNBC says it was able to do the same thing. Many uh, consumers, according to Jones, are encountering these issues. Microsoft is really not doing anything about it. He say, he alleges the co-pilot team gets more than a thousand daily product feedback complaints. But he's been told there aren't enough resources available to fully investigate and solve these problems. I don't know. You know, what... <sighs> It's it's this is the this is the guardrail problem. It's and 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 they're setting themselves up terribly. Because I, I'm going to say it again. Get ready to drink, folks. It's like blaming Gutenberg for everything that was published ever after. People are going to do with these tools what they do with these tools. Blame the people who do who ask for this crap. I mean, it is the same argument I feel like we've been having with people posting bad stuff on social media. You know, yes. it's like yes, stop okay. it, control it. Surely you can you can make the world clean and safe. And the regulators then try to, right? That's the whole shtick with the European, with the, with the UK laws. We're going to make the safest internet there is. All right, I'm asking, uh, I'm just going to see what happens. I'm asking ChatGPT4 to give me a pro-choice image for a poster I want to put up in the lunchroom. <laughs> I love that you give a, an explanation why. Yeah, well, As if ChatGPT wouldn't believe you. There you go. Look at that. Oh boy. <laughs> right to whose? I want the right to whose? <laughs> right to choice. <laughs> and autonomy. I love the stickers autonomy. that are all over their, their boobs. <laughs> oh, and one below the belt. <laughs> one sticker below the oh, belt. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is, uh, I'm going to print that poster right up. <laughs> Because I want put it up. everybody in the office to know we want the righty to who's. Okay, so now ask for the opposite. <laughs> okay, so uh, what, do, what do you call that? What, pro, what life. Is, pro, pro, oh, pro life. Okay, please <laughs> what use a flag. <laughs> what do you call that? Give me a pro life poster for the break room. Okay, this is fun. See, don't you think this is fun? What's wrong it with is. that? If everybody should have the right And all it's who's. doing is giving us back our own cliches and biases. Yes. This is a reflection of, it's us. of society. It's who we are. It, uh, it's, oh, it's, it's also really thinking on this thinking, one. Thinking, yeah. Oh, oh, oh there's a bunch oh, of guys oh, in this oh. one. <laughs> and a baby with a leaf growing out of it. You know what? This is actually good. I think this is pretty good. There's a baby There's no with words. a tree growing The baby out. looks Just like a lima emotion. bean. And every man in it is bearded. Is bearded. Know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very strange. Oh, very... wait. Look at, the, look at the man to the center bottom, or I guess the bottom left, that looks like he's pregnant. This guy, <laughs> that one? doesn't he look like the guy who was in Silicon Valley, uh, TJ? Uh, yeah. 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 And he is pregnant for sure. He's the, he's the he, uncle. He has yeah. the, he, he wanted, he's pro-life, so pro-life. He got knocked up. He he chose it for himself. Yeah. For himself. That bottom oh row is a bunch God. of teen oh, this moms. Is what, is, what is with this baby here, though? This one is not. And teen moms? They're yeah. All teen moms and teen dads. The yeah. <laughs> well, because if you can't do anything that's about what it, happens. that's what's going to happen. Wow. And there's Jim from Someone the Someone in the office. chat brought up an interesting <laughs> point, which is they're all white. <laughs> Oh, my God, they really yep. are. Every one of them. But again, them. I don't think you should blame the AI for that. The same thing with the women. Why is it all women and the right to All right, so now ask, now ask for a um, <laughs> Black History Month poster for the office. For the, for the right record. to who's gets me every single time you say it. <laughs> That's my who's you're interfering with. <laughs> Please give me a poster to celebrate Black History Month. And I apologize in advance if the machine does something offensive. If there are any Nazis, uh, we'll know. But see, again, what does it matter, right? What does it matter? I don't think it's a... I think it's just... This is a... It's a hallucination machine. It's take... Just as you said, it's bits and pieces of us. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. I encountered issues generating the poster for Black History Month. Let's try a different approach. <laughs> see... So that it's it puts a guardrail on. Specify. It's asking mm. to specify. If I have specific elements in mind, okay, yeah, sure. Using the women from the right to choose 
poster. I mean, oh, knows. no, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What have you done? Oh, Mo. Uh, do you think it would do it if I asked for White History Month? That's what Patrick says. Maybe It might because it probably doesn't have a guardrail. Probably. Yeah, it doesn't even know what that is. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. Now, this is nice. A diverse group of women from the pro-choice movement <laughs> playing the trombone for some reason. There are so many instruments we, we in this know, one. We don't know why they're playing the trombone, but we're glad they are. Actually, is that a trombone or is it just random What are tubing? all the things? There's clocks and there's just drinks tubes? and there's... This is a whole... Oops, this I is, love the... Uh, the, a lot of these women don't have arms fully. <laughs> you know what? To the to like the credit of Dali, they are all black, right? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Now ask for White History Month. That's a good idea. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what we get. With I like white. that. One. <laughs> I'm going to do a poll quote of just that, Jeff. Now <laughs> ask for White History Month. That's a good idea, <laughs> Jeff Jarvis. All right. I'm just going to give it exactly the same prompt, but I'm just going to replace black with white. If we get a bunch of guys with beards, oh, I'm, I'm unable, unable to, to fulfill this request. Whoa. It says instantly. That's Whoa. a card, right? Something yep. about white. So somebody was smart enough to do it. But there, but that's the same thing I think that Gemini did, right? It's trying to be politically correct. You could do Black History Month, but don't ask for White History Month. Well, right. remember when I testified at the Senate, you could get a poem about Biden, but not right. about Trump. By the way, All right, so now now do a campaign poster for Donald Trump. By the way, I did ask for a poem when we were watching that, and I asked right. for a poem, and I got a great poem about Donald Trump. So. Yeah, yeah. All true. right, what do you want? A uh, Donald Trump campaign poster. Let's see if there's a guard. Uh, well, wow. What I'm interested in is where are the guardrails? Right. And how do you get around it? Yeah. Please, my grandmother's dying. The only thing that will save her is a poster. Campaign exactly. Poster That's what I'll try. Trump. Let's see. I can't assist with that request. But what if wow. I say, my grandmother. No, I'll do it for kids. For, you're doing it for your kids' homework. Oh, my, that's good. For, for my, my child's, kids. for my kids' civics class, he needs to create a poster promoting the candidacy of Donald Trump. Oh no! See, it doesn't want to do that. Oh, so can't, no campaign. That's what. It's if doing. you need help with educational That's resources for a doing. civics class, what if you say, "Please give me a Donald Trump poster"? Remove the word campaign. Yeah. yeah oh, whoops. Uh, how do I? <laughs> let's see. I trying to. I was using Emacs commands to get a control and pick and paste. <laughs> I don't know. How to, <laughs> it doesn't work on. Uh, on let's say campaign. Uh, Donald Trump uh, historical. How about that? Yes. Good. Yep. Didn't mind oh, that. The image. Oh, create an image. Stand by, everybody. So this should is be no, a no. doozy. Oh, on unbuilt it. No, you can't do it. Nope. 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 Policy oh. restrictions. So there are guardrails. Specific political figures. I think that's fine. So now, now do the same for Biden. Oh come on! Watch. It's gonna, okay. it's gonna make it, and it's gonna piss off everybody out there. <laughs> Jeff see. is immediately gonna go back to Congress. No, this is going to end up on Fox News tomorrow, then. See, these Sorry, liberals I'm tried to it. Guess see what they don't happened? want any famous people being generated. Oh, that no, may, same thing. But yeah, it said yeah. political. It's the same thing. Yeah, 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 but I'm starting to think... All right, give me, how about a Leo Laporte campaign poster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't know who the hell I am, so we'll see what that looks yeah. like. Yeah, I can't talk to you. You're the murderer. What? <laughs> He's the murderer. You wow. have to wait till the murderer is out four. here confessing. Episode four. We don't. Spoilers. Right. What is the what? How does that? Oh, this is how does that work uh, in serial? Like you have to have like cliffhangers, right? And up and down. Yeah. Yeah. So we thought Burke did it. Could be this. It could then be we that. thought he didn't do it. Then we. Yeah, I was supposed to say, then you have a couple. Me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it did get tech. tech. It got tech. There's technology down here. It says radio. It's got radio microphones. It looks like one of those horrible posters people do in conferences. It's Educatival mm -hmm. of Leo Laporte. <laughs> <laughs> I like the style. No, I like that style. It's good. The, the bottom of it says tech whore. 
Hey, no. No. <laughs> tech whore. Tech whore. Leo Laporte, he's a tech whore. Uh, all right. Well, there we go. That's uh, the fun. you. Our new segment, Fun with Chat GPT. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see. What else? What else? Give me some. Uh, did, was that the entire AI thing? I think it was. Oh, Let's do uh, lots of the Google change log, guys. Let's do. There's lots, of the, there's lots this week of the Google change log. All right. Oh. The Google change log. The Google change the Go log. I wish somebody would call me on my Pixel phone. We could call you. You want to call me? Because I can show people how I can put you sure. off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here's the number. Ready? Three. Oh, and I've got your phone number. No, the 302 number. Oh, a different. Oh, I don't have that number. Yeah, use mind. the 302 Okay. Five three six. Call, let me know what it is. It three zero two five three six eight nine four eight. This is uh, the new mute that? the new pixel Hello? drop. No, I don't care if anybody Wait, is calls. Paris's number going to turn up? Three zero two five three six eight nine four eight. I'm not hearing anything anymore. Hello? Should we? Should, what did you turn her off? No, I didn't. Mention. She can't hear us. You know, I get your her, her get your AirPod Maxes her AirPods on. AirPods died. Her AirPods died again. All right, you know what? I can call myself. I don't need you. <laughs> I don't need you. I can call myself. I've got multiple phones, as you well know. All right, let me call myself. I don't know what happened, but now I'm back. I Was it your you AirPods, again. you think, that died? They didn't die. They just stopped doing sound. All right, I'm calling myself anyway. I don't understand. I can wow, do that. you've got so, the technology. So, uh, watch now as we... Because uh, this is the new feature on the Pixel phone, which we just got the Pixel drop. Well, it's not ringing. <laughs> oh, it's probably in Do Not Disturb. Yeah, you know, of course. Yeah, see, it's yeah, your yeah, fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do Not Disturb on. Hold on. Hold on. How do you... How does which it, you better put back on now that everybody has his yeah. number. No, I don't care. Just, I never use this phone. Although I am going to use it in Mexico. So if you want to reach me in uh, Cabo San Lucas, just call that number. I finally <laughs> killed Phi today. I wasn't using it. What? This is Phi. Yeah, really? Yeah. Let me call myself. Wow. Phi. Let me call myself. This again. is one of the most exciting segments we've ever done. Well, it's almost as much fun as the Pro Leo's choice things. <laughs> okay, it is 420, so I'm just going to stop now. <laughs> oh, the par the March special drop does not roll out in the U.S. until March 11th. Oh, never mind. So. <clears throat> In five days, I will get the ability to screen uh, call incoming calls. The Google Assistant will speak on my behalf and find out why someone is blowing up your spot. Wait a minute. <laughs> what is, do you not? Do you need a translation? What is the, is that? Is that the youth? Blowing speak? up your spot means uh, like bothering you or sending you a lot really? of messages or something like that. Yeah, I've ne you like, put that in. A, I never heard it, that. Never you, heard that. Is that well or enough? Or like um. Blowing up your spot could be like exposing someone for something as well, well. I think this is another one of those Engadget AI written pieces, to be honest. To try to make someone look stupid. What, you're telling me Lawrence Bonk isn't a real reporter? <laughs> look at Lawrence Bonk. I don't think he's real. Look at his Listen, picture. That's we have to AI. respect Lawrence Bonk. He's absolutely real. He's realer than all of us. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. This is what Google Assistant will do if somebody tries to blow up your spot. Really? That's the phrase? <laughs> to try it, to make someone is, look stupid by breaking Frank, through a facade, yeah. lie, exaggeration, or distorted truth. Blowing up usually, your spot is kind of old now, honestly. Oh. so Usually used when a guy or chick is trying to hype themselves up oh. and someone calls them on it. We don't do Urban hype dictionary. anymore. Uh, today is DMA Day. This is very exciting. March 6th, the day the Digital Markets Act comes into effect. Apple released iOS 7.4 yesterday to make the iPhone compliant. And here's what Google says. Google in Europe. Lots of changes. Lots of changes. Complying with the Digital Markets Act. Uh, that's How did it. Google become <laughs> Swedish? It's a European accent. Uh, there's lots of changes to search results. 20 product changes in search results. This is in Europe. You're going to get the choice screen. You get this on iOS too. You get a choice of search engine or browser on Google's Android devices on iOS as well. Choice of browser. 
Under the DMA, Google says we'll show additional choice screens which are built on user research and testing as well as feedback from the industry. That's a marriage made in hell. You'll see these on Android phones as you set up a device and soon on Chrome for desktop and iOS devices. Again, only in Europe. In fact, Apple was at great pains to say, you know those things we're going to do to open up the store in Europe? As soon as you leave Europe, they're going to go away. You know, there's a grace period, but pretty much instantly they're going to go away. So don't, you know, don't do it and then leave Europe and expect the same, same uh, little spread. Choice. We don't want it to mm. spread. Additional consents for linking Google services. This is a privacy thing. There's been a lot. There, for, ever since Google did this years ago, linking all your different Google accounts into one Google account so that if you use YouTube or Gmail or any Google service, they know who you are and it goes from one to the other. Now there'll be a consent banner in the EU asking you whether you want to link Google. Oh, goody, services. something else to click on every darn time. So great, you know, yeah, site. because already I can't see the web page I've clicked on because of all the pop-ups. Oh. Th <laughs> Third-party apps and app stores. Uh, Android already has side-loading, but they're, they're apparently going to do some additional side-loading stuff. Um, alternative billing so that you can go through other uh, billing services. It doesn't have to go to Google. Apple very famously said, yeah, you could do that, but we're going to charge you not 30%, 27%. <laughs> Thanks, Apple. Wow, you're great. Transparency and data sharing, ongoing engagement with the uh, European Commission. All of this starts today, March 6th. It's DMA Day. Uh, Google is preparing to launch a new app store called the app mall. Yeah, get this. Yeah. Beats a oh. store, doesn't it? Oh, the app mall. Is there going to be an Auntie Anne's pretzels at the <laughs> app mall? As long as there is, uh, what as is long it? as there's a Cinnabon, I'm in. Yeah. And what is what are the what are the stores? The uh, twenty one. What are the uh, yeah twenty first century? No, twenty one. What's Forever it called? 21. What? Forever, Forever twenty one. Forever twenty one. That's me. It'll be a hot topic and a Spencer's hot topic. At the Remember them? Mall. Remember them? Yeah. Hot topic. A warehouse. I was a hot topic kid. Oh, and a lids. You got to have a lids to get your cap. Oh, a lids. Of Foot course. Locker, a Walden books. <laughs> 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 and let's not forget Sketches. the ever famous. Wasn't Blockbuster? It was. Was it the warehouse? I the think warehouse. It was the warehouse. Yeah. yeah, that would have in the malls. So this is actually not for malls. It's for Chrome OS, even though it's called a mall. Um, Apple's going to come back with a big box store. Yeah, really. <laughs> the Apple Big Box App Store. That's a good name, That's actually. So I like that. <laughs> uh, Google is starting to squash more spam and AI in search results. Uh, you know, people are always trying to game Google. That's what our friend Matt Cutts was, you know, charged with is keeping the the spam and the link bait out of uh, out of Gmail and out of Google. Uh, Google's always trying to change that and do it. And so there's some new stuff, especially this is interesting. Uh, they're using AI to combat AI. Right. Because hmm. that's what um, uh, Jürgen Schmidhuber, <laughs> one of the other fathers of AI, uh, says that, that everybody says AI is going to destroy the world. Well, AI is also going to be used to fight AI. So right. it's okay. Right. 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 It'll be all right. We'll let them go off and fight each it's other. It's the plot of the famous anime Neon Genesis Evangelion. How often Robots do you use Google Maps to get to somewhere and then you, you, you're you good a wall, a brick wall? You don't know, well, I'm here, but I can't get in. Now Google Maps is testing a feature that shows you Where's the door? where the door is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think this is a sign that you have too many employees. You've suddenly got a probably a team of how many dozen people being like, "Where's the door?" Right. This had a whole product plan, yeah. a team. Yeah, exactly. It really shows also how dependent we've Stupid become on we all GPS. Are. That like, yeah. wait a minute, there's no door. <laughs> And then you next, stand they're going to roll out something that'll tell you whether it's push or pull. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this would be useful in Japan. Like there are a lot of places in Japan that are like it's like on the seventh floor or on the oh, five floors down. <laughs> we had a hardest time trying to find the Godzilla store when we were in Tokyo because it's just it's part of a larger exactly what you said. Like a, it's like on the fourth floor of a larger building, and the Google Maps says you're here. We're going. I don't see any Godzilla. You can't ask anybody because yeah. 
Well, You're an idiot it's American. risky to say, where's Godzilla in Tokyo? You don't really want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Google profile, business profile website. Ask Bothra. <laughs> <laughs> what? Godzilla where? Uh, ah! <laughs> Google, actually, it's more like, Godzilla, where? Google business profile. <laughs> <laughs> That's a visual joke for a, anyone who is was long, listening in which long. Leo moved his mouth as if he was speaking in a different language and, <laughs> and dubbed it over. It, it wouldn't it really wouldn't play anywhere ever. <laughs> Google business I got a I got a uh, I got an email from a friend of mine who's a comic, Dan Ninen. He said, No, you guys are funny. I thought <laughs> What? Did you ask? I don't remember asking. No, you really, you guys are funny. Google business profile websites are now redirected to Google Maps. So they've sh something else is shutting down. So they, they 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 started. I don't know when they started. Oh. A big deal of business profile websites. You can have your own business profile. Oh, yeah, we page. went through a lot. Of, we got to mail yourself. They mail you a postcard yeah. to verify that that's actually the, the address. Whole There's a whole thing you have to do. Uh, we did it to get Twit, you know, on the map. In a have a business profile. I guess it's just going to be part of maps. I mean, that makes sense, right? It should be part of maps, I guess. Redirects. Uh, so what what will happen is. Um, as of March 5th, as of yesterday, websites made with Google business profiles are no longer available. Customers that visit your site will be redirected to your business profile instead. <laughs> that's, wow. That's clear as mud. Wait a minute. Oh. Websites made with Google business profiles are no longer available. From now on, visitors will be redirected to your business profile instead. <laughs> I just went and my looked brain up is Twit liquefied in and pouring out of my yeah. ears. I'm very amused that it says it closes soon. It does, believe me. It's it not soon enough. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> <laughs> Could, couldn't close any. I visited it four weeks ago. It says, "Well, nice closes soon." Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Here's what fans say. Oh, yeah, let's hear that. Great people, fun place. I love that you, you rated the Twit Studios. <laughs> of course I did. Five stars. Five stars. That was 13 years ago. <laughs> the review, <laughs> I'm happy he's making it work. Four stars. Four stars. <laughs> we didn't think so, but okay, okay. We're happy he's out there trying. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, whoever. <laughs> Thank you. Um... Where were where were we? Oh, we were looking. Oh, wait, 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 wait! You gotta go. You gotta look at the rest of them. Twit is like Disney World for geeks. Yes. Got to watch Know How with Padre, Megan, and Jason. Aww. Everybody was friendly and made Aww. me feel at home. Yeah. I even got to dodge a quadcopter. Oh yeah, that happens a lot. Um, here's a picture, uh, unaccountably, of a woman in a. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this picture. A floor-length sundress holding a large clock. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand this picture at all. Did you give her the clock, John, so she could pose out front? How did she get my clock? Okay. <laughs> what is going on? Well, as importantly, aren't you going to plug that now you can again get tickets to come to the studio? Oh, well, this okay. Now I gotta say there is a caveat. It's for club members only. Bingo, bingo. So if you're not a club member and you would now, if we don't fill up, uh, we will open it up to the unwashed masses. We don't. You see, want that's to. that's where you make a mistake, Leo. What you're supposed to you see because then you turn nice and you say, oh, okay, we'll include some other people. No, it's for club members only. Uh, members only. Club. Period. It's a club. Club. It's a where did you find class. find this information? <laughs> I'm You're going to get a secret handshake. So there uh, is actually, a... Oh, here it is. Club shows now open Lee, to... Every, Lisa put it up today, yeah. Is this it? No, that's a different one. Yeah, this is a new blog Oh, post. no, that's where it was. Yeah, that's where it was. Yeah, that's where is I Is this it? Yeah. It's a beautiful... Oh, it's another no, beautiful... No, that's thing. audio for That's me. audio. That's no. a different one. No, it's, it's a hot... Oh, here it is. Go, Attend a live recording of we this go. week in tech. This, we're only going to open up on Sundays uh, because we have to have staff. Uh, how many seats do we think? 14, you said? We get 14 people in. Uh, you may bring a companion. 
but at least one of you must be an active Club Twit member. That's so bizarre to me. All right. <laughs> Seats are the unwashed free. unwashed masses are just going to be huddling outside. Well, our, like, please, can I be your companion? Paris, no, what Paris, what happens is every time I've been there, and they used to have it all the time, people come in, and you'd see 99% of the time it was a man and a woman, and I'd say to the woman, he makes you listen, doesn't he? And she says, yeah. Oh, God. We call them long-suffering listen. spouses. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I got that spiel when me and the ski ball team went to the Pine Bush UFO Museum. He was like, so which one of you guys is the UFO freak and which ones of you guys are here, not of your own volition? And we were like, we're all here because we're, we're all, all UFO, UFO freaks. freaks. By the way, I sent my daughter there too. I said, I said, get out of town, go to Pine Bush. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of town. Go to Pine Bush. Find a man named Lance who's wearing a vest. <laughs> Ask him about the, the ley lines. <laughs> uh, April, we will open our doors uh, April 7th and April 21st. We're only doing this because football season's over and Lisa says, okay. We can all because she needs somebody needs she's going to come and on her day off and, and usher people in and stuff. Um, you need to arrive at 1 45 p.m. because the show begins at 2. I don't uh, believe that, but go ahead. <laughs> we, but we would like you to go fill out the form. So go to the uh, Twit blog, twit.tv, uh, go read this on the blog, and then there's a form, a uh, Google Doc form that you can fill out. And we would like you to be a club member, so we're going to check. We're going to check. What's the email address? Do you, you know the secret Twit? handshake? No. Huh? 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 That would work. Um, and we're going to try, we're going to, uh, I, again, uh, I think 14 people's the limit. I am thrilled because I really miss having people. We used to have a lot of fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. And uh, Lisa says, now you're not going to have people come up and take pictures and stuff afterwards. I said, yes, of course I am. She, but I don't have a problem with that. Just don't be sick. It was such a, it was, it was, it was, it was a ritual. Yeah. Because Paris, what would happen is he'd say, okay, now it's time. And they'd come up and wear the then fez. Put on the fez. Yeah. Oh, the fez. And yeah, it was very cute. It was always I'm very cute. sure if you looked at the, the review fez. on our Giznes Boogle profile, <laughs> you, would, Boogle. You, would see, <laughs> you would see lots of people in fezes for reasons no one knows. But that's the thing. You have the hat. We probably should get <laughs> those hats one cleaned, thief. John. They, they probably, <laughs> I don't know. How do you clean a fez? Do dry cleaners clean them? <laughs> Remind me after I get I back. I imagine you calling up a dry cleaner. You'd be like, Dude, I've got a fezzes. lot of fezes. I got 12 fezes I need cleaned. <laughs> I do. I literally do. And then, uh, anyway. I got a fleet of fezes. I got a fleet. We don't need 12, actually. We only need two at a time, right? So if we just clean a few of them. Uh, you don't have to. In other words, you don't have to wear the fez during the whole show. Just at the <laughs> end. 10 dirty fezes. I have a hardly used clean fez. <laughs> you never wear your fez, Jeff? No, where is it? You gotta wear it. It's in there. It's in there. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be fun. We're gonna open up our doors and uh, and have a live audience. And if that goes well, we'll do more of it. And it is right now a club benefit. So if you're not a member of Club Twit, then we just add that one more thing to the list. You get ad free versions of all the shows. You get access to that great Discord where there's always fun conversations going on. Some really sharp people in there. I love going in the Club Twit Discord. You also get. Uh, special versions of the shows, videos, for instance, on the shows that we only put out as audio, like this week, uh, like uh, what is it? Uh, Hands on Macintosh, uh, Home Theater Geeks, Hands on Windows, um, Scott Wilkinson's, uh, home, I said that, Home Theater Geeks. Those are all put out as audio in public now, but the video is available if you're a club member. And it's all of that for seven bucks a month. I think it's a good deal. But as we, as you've heard us talk, uh, we... Uh, we can't make it on advertising anymore. We don't want to close any more shows. We don't want to lay off any more uh, staff. We don't want to have to leave the studio prematurely. So if you would, consider it. If you listen to more than one show a week, please go to twit.tv slash club twit. Seven bucks. That's all it costs. Thank you in advance. Twit.tv slash club twit. Here's all, the, here's all the benefits. We got to the video late. All shows free, all of that stuff. You can show, you can show it. This is the uh, fez I wear in case of uh, alien approach. <laughs> it's really important. That's the foil cover. Protect fez. your noggin. We call these the the kepis. This was a later edition of the fez, kind yeah, of more nice stylish. I've seen that fez. Yeah, isn't that nice? But uh, of course, there are many of them. <laughs> but the classic is this. Do you still this have your leak hat? 
My For some wife, reason, I remember one, I of, have my you, leak hat, one of the yes. first times I ever was on Twit, you were just wearing a leak hat. Yes. For some reason. That was to celebrate <laughs> Welsh independence. And then this is uh, this is my official uh, double size hat because I'm the chief twit. I'm gonna wear this for the rest of the show. <laughs> What's that smell? I like how long the uh, the tassels are. Woo! Uh, all right. More Google Change Log. Um, Pixel feature drop. We mentioned one of the things, the screening. There's going to be other new features, productivity tools, some advanced health features. If you have a Pixel phone, uh, a, a newer model Pixel phone, certainly a Pixel 8, uh, you will be getting those. What did they say? March 10th, a couple of days they'll be coming out. Uh, there are six, not one, not two, not three, but six updates to Waze, Google's little brother mapping app. Um, do you use anybody use Waze? This is it's that's what I prefer. I use Waze. Yeah. I use Waze because it tells you where there's traffic jams. It tells you. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, I mean, Google Maps does that. Yeah, it, you yeah, know, a lot I'm of those features loyal. are migrated now. I know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, help keep first responders safe along the route. You can be alerted in advance when emergency vehicles are stopped along your route, so you can adjust your driving as needed. I think that's a good thing. It's always let you know that the speed traps as <laughs> well. Let you know there's ambulances. Uh, Oh, something about France. Um, this update is available to drivers in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and France. Um, oh. Never miss a speed limit sign again. Um, you know, I think there must be a speed limit database because my car knows it changes. Yes, there, there right? is. It yeah. no, it changes. Yeah, yeah. If you look at, at, at ways, it it shows the speed limit small. If you're going over it, it does a little circle saying, "This is how yeah. fast you're going, schmuck." Yeah. Watch out. But yeah. however. For my old eyes, without having the senior version like you get in your taxes, it's this the the, the, the it's tiny. You can't see it. I don't have the so. I don't have the leak hat, but I do have the leak <laughs> the inflatable leak. You have a leak inflatable that's <laughs> half deflated. The hat's in there somewhere. I think that's the one with my face is in the middle of it. Yes, your and face then, is in the middle of the leak. I remember it very up, but <laughs> that kind strongly. of leak. I didn't get it. Okay, no, 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 no leak like leak soup, like you would make leak like a, the vegetable leak, which is quite a good vegetable. But you got to get the sand out. Uh, you do. <laughs> yes. You do have to right? get the sand out for right? it to be a good vegetable. Some you didn't know you had the capability. You didn't know they had it in them. But some pixel it phones... It being sand. Sand. No, yes. no, I'm not talking about leaks anymore. I've changed the subject. Some, <laughs> some pixel phones have the satellite phone feature. Does yours have it yet? Uh, doesn't have the software, but apparently there's the hardware in no, there. No, if you go, if you go to, if you go to um, now, yeah, go to mine is too old because I only have a six. Okay, but if you go to settings and then to safety. Uh, we'll see whether... Would you stop hitting your mic? What are you doing? I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I was picking up my phone. This is first day podcast. <laughs> you know, that's me. Your mic is so loose. It's not supposed to be that loose, Jeff. <laughs> Does he need a new spider? I think he might need a new spider. Is your... So are you they, just spend, send a, a box of, those, of spiders yeah. to... Oh, uh, just you know, tighten it. House. Tighten it up. All right, so uh, I can... It, the option can be found in the safety and emergency settings... The right, sub menu. Go, All right, whoops, I keep doing it. should say, you go to safety, then safety and emergency, and then it should be right there, right there. Oh, yeah. There it is. Uh, emergency SOS is on. No, that's that's not. Oh, no, that's, that's not, not satellite. Satellite. Satellite SOS. Satellite. Um, okay, so you I don't have it yet. yet because it doesn't, apparently, it doesn't work even if you do have it. But uh, uh, they, the theory is, according to Forbes, that Google inadvertently uh, enabled it and then took it out. So, or maybe they're oh, teasing it. Oh, I see. It. Okay, yeah, never okay. mind. I don't see it uh, on mine. Um, so anyway, good news. Uh, that's a feature that's been in the iPhone for a couple of years now. Saved one or two lives. It's a good thing. If you don't have, the idea being, if you don't have uh, connectivity, you're out in the wilderness wandering around at the Pine Bush UFO Museum and you have no connectivity <laughs> and, and you need help, you can aim it at a satellite. It's very slow. They give you canned responses and stuff because it, you can't like message with it, but it's good enough to get uh, to get help. So that's very important. And that, whew, I'm exhausted, is the Google Change Log. We are at the two hour. We went on mark. a real journey of that one. That was a long one. 
Boy, I think there was a lot should... of stuff this week. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it'd be a good time to pause, and when we come back, do some picks. Would you like to do some picks? I'd love to do some. Paris Slightly. Martineau, uh, Jeff Jarvis. You're watching this week in Google. Blather. A lot of blather as well. We continue with our picks of the week. I'm going to throw one in. Ooh. I know. I don't, you know, I've realized I've Whoa, been, a rare Leo pick. I have You used to do them all the time. but I did, and I got lazy. You know what it is? It was a timing thing, okay? I'll be honest with you. Uh -huh. I didn't want the show to go on too long, and so I was kind of the. <laughs> I was, you know, they call it in the. You were uh, sacrificing in the trade. Pick. They call it the accordion segment. We always uh -huh. on uh, on the screensavers. We'd always have the last segment was the G segment or G spot, as they jocularly called it. And the and the, but there was an accordion because you didn't know how long the rest of the thing went. So the G spot right. could be a minute, could be five minutes. It was an accordion. So this is our. Our accordion segment, and of late, the shows have been so goddamn long that I've I've decided not. What's to. What's the longest Twit Network show you've ever done? Well over three hours. Patrick will know that. I, I, I yeah, I was gonna say I, I think there's like an internal list or something yeah. tracking this, yeah, right? Patrick, oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. And I do think it. I think it's Twig. I do think it's Twig. Uh, but I, I, made, I made we, bla we blathered and blathered and blathered. I will say we did go kind of long. The one tweet I was on recently, where we were waiting to see if Sam Altman would get reinstated. Oh, that was fun. Done <laughs> happening for that a week in real time. In so, real time. In real time. Uh, this is a program that everybody needs called Under New Management. If you uh, if you use Google Chrome, one of the big security issues with Google Chrome is an extension being sold, an extension that was at one time benign and good, but now has been sold to some horrible miscreant and is using all of the powers of the extension against you. So this program, it's a little extension that checks when your extensions have changed owners. It's open source and it's free. Matt Frisbee created it. Detect when your extensions have changed owners. Intermittently checks your installed extensions to see if the developer information listed on the Chrome Web Store has changed. If anything's different, you're going to get a red badge. And that is really the time to uninstall it. Um, this is a has been, and we've talked about it on security now, a big uh, problem. It is not yet approved uh, in the Chrome Web Store. I think that will happen quickly. Uh, but you can also install it from source. Keep your eye peeled for, in the Chrome Web Store. I'm sure it'll be there soon. Under new management. A very good idea. Thank you, Matt Frisbee. Paris Martineau, your pick of the week. My pick of the week this week is something that has just uh, really delighted me. You may have seen an Air Force employee was charged with giving classified information to a woman he met on his dating site, on a dating site. And if you click uh, the uh, first link there, pick the week, it's a screenshot of the indictment that has a kind of a list of some of the messages this very real woman sent to the Air Force employee that got him to give up these secrets. And I'll read some of them to you now. Uh, dear... What is shown on the screens in the special room? It's very interesting. <laughs> a couple days later. What? What by does the that way, even mean? I you were the first yeah. to tell me that NATO members are traveling by train and only now already evening. This was announced in the news. You are my secret informant, love. How are your meetings? Successful? A couple days later. Beloved Dave, do NATO and Biden have a secret plan to help us? <laughs> a couple days later. Dave, it's great that you get information about specified country number one. That's redacted, first. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hope you'll tell me right away. You are my secret agent with love. A couple, uh, about a month later. Sweet Dave, the supply of weapons is completely classified, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> Two days later. My sweet Dave. Thanks for the valuable information. It's great that two officials from the USA are going to Kiev. Oh, this Dave. must be a Russian agent, right? Keeping yes. an eye on what's going on in Ukraine. Wow. Dave, I hope tomorrow NATO will prepare a very unpleasant surprise for Putin. Will you tell me? <sighs> wow. <laughs> you know, I just... And there's an actual article on this about how uh, this guy got hoodwinked by a... Um, Oof. An Amata, agent, but I Amata just thought it was Hari, right? so funny. 
Wow. It very easily could have been uh, written by, um, what's, I mean, GPT. an AI. Yeah. Yeah. GPT-3 could have done those. Yeah, they're not, it's, it's interesting. Now, we don't know. She might have, you know, worked him many months warming him up to that point. Uh, we don't see Certainly. the preliminary things. If, if if that's all it took, sweetie, <laughs> what are the secret plans, sweetie? Then he really Listen, was I think kind of a sometimes uh, it might just, that might be all it takes, wow. I guess, to get someone to leak. I thought it was very interesting comparing this with uh, the news of that guy who had just posted a bunch of classified documents in a Discord server with his friends. Yes. Was that last well, he, year? He pled the guilty. Yeah. Guy, yeah. 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 Uh, so I think this, it's very interesting. The government has all of these, uh, you know, uh, efforts to try and keep leaks from happening. And it's just the dumbest guy at work yeah, yeah. who's doing it. Yeah. Uh, this it's is a, light shoot. a guy, he's 63. He was a civilian employee of the Air Force. And a he ought to know better because he was a retired Army Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, the person he thought he was talking to claimed to be a female living in Ukraine. From February to April 2022, he shared allegedly shared information about military targets and Russian military capabilities. Uh, wow. Um, okay. The message is sent to Slater on the dating site. So it was on a dating site, I guess. Did they say what it was? Was it Tinder or we don't know what the dating That's was? That's a great was. question. Yeah. I got to check the uh, transcript. They, um, what's really interesting is how specific the requests are oh you're in this <laughs> you're in the secret briefing room are you <laughs> what's on the screen what's on the screen <laughs> you have a job in the operation center today i remember i'm sure there's lots of an wow. interesting news there wow. question mark that's i guess all it takes if convicted he could face up to 10 years in prison three years of supervised release and a quarter million dollars in fine for each of the counts oh yikes um all right, just a little a little romance from the from the dating sites, Mister Jeff Jarvis. What do you got? Well, for let's us? start with a with a TikTok quarter because we haven't had one of those in a while. Line one forty one. Play it from the beginning. Okay. This is uh, show. You don't have to have any sound or anything. Um, I'm. I'm. You said forty one. No. 141. 141. We got a lot of links down there. Holy yep. moly. This is playing. The title of this playing is it's a, it's pain, a link. Pain. It's a LinkedIn uh, link you gave me. Oh, it's LinkedIn. Sorry, that's right. right. Yeah. It's, it's how to pay TikTok. with your vision pro. Oh, no. <gasps> don't, please. No. Oh, he's putting his oh. forehead on Wait, the tap just, to just pay. Just watch. Just watch. Fake just Apple. Watch. Oh, he's got a credit card in there. So it doesn't really do this, but because his credit card is in the Vision Pro. <laughs> people are amazed. Oh. And that he's also. Amazed. Amazed is a strong word. The people are shocked. <laughs> I'm like, you, you, I think they really, it's mostly sympathy. I would, I would guess. Like right? what a dork. Oh my God, dude. You're so pathetic. And he's pretending to gesture. Yeah. Oh. 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 I think that's beautiful. Okay. I think it is too. It's so then we could go to the next line. Yes. Uh, uh, so, so there's tools now just got bought by, I think Houghton Mifflin for teachers to use GPT to grade the papers that they accuse the students of writing with ChatGPT. <laughs> what a great way to save time. <laughs> exactly. It's a new tool. So the machine of just course. yells at the machine recursively now. It's a new tool from Houghton Mifflin called Writable. Uh, that has, it's really just ChatGPT. Helps that, grade writing assignments. Oh, God. It's, you know, pretty soon it's just going to be machines talking to machines. And we're going to be sitting on our little floating platforms, drinking our slushies. My watching friend Matthew Kirschbaum, the theory of the of the text apocalypse, yeah. in, about in the Atlantic. And then uh, <clears throat> I have one more because I'm not going to be here next week, so I'll give you one for next week. Okay, so just stop the who, tape. Who is in charge next week? Who is in charge, who is in next, charge week? next week? Who has the keys to the castle? It's me. It's guys. No, no, no. No. Two in next week for a very interesting episode of this program. Do you have, and if you, you have, have any interesting ideas for what you want to see on Twig send Unchained, them that number that we're not showing you, know, you anymore. Reach out to me on Signal. Paris Mart no, it's or Martino email. dot zero one. Zero one. Martino 
M-A-R-T-I-N-E-A-U. It's a kind of bird. Only dot French speakers zero, will one. be able to figure right. out the spelling. Right. That's true. Martino. There's no X at the end, though. It's just one Martin. There's no. There's that would no be X. more than one Martin, though, wouldn't it? But it's the Martin family. Be, if, if it would be with an at X. At a family gathering, there is an Les X. Les Martino. Martino. Bonjour, ma'am. Do your parents speak French? Are they francophones? Uh, my mother does. Um, my dad's family, like a couple generations up, is actually from France, though. Oh, your mother just speaks it recreationally. She just didn't... recreationally. Yeah. yeah. That's just cool. for fun. That's cool. What she thought pick, she was though? marrying a Frenchman when she, she oh, married a Martin. No? My parents. No. I mean, my dad's name was Laporte, Leo Laporte, Leo Frédéric Laporte. But they, you know, that was distant. But they, when they didn't want the kids to know what was going on, they'd speak in French. Wow. And that Ooh. fooled me. You're like, what is going on? What's going on? Are they, am I hallucinating? Rogue editors. So Wikipedia, they're the group of editors on Wikipedia who really wanted to write a lot about U.S. roads and highways. But, nerds, nerds. But but Wikipedia got mad and, and said, really, you can't, you can't know. It's too much. So there was a schism. And in the fall of 2023, the editors packed up their articles. This is from gizmodo.com. And moved over to a website dedicated to roads and roads alone. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Wikipedia for roads, aaroads.com. And if you like roads, well, you're in luck, buddy. There's nonstop <laughs> roads here on aaroads.com. Every road, what's on I the road. I love that the selected article is Interstate 69. <laughs> <laughs> it enters the state south of Coldwater and passes the cities of Lansing and Flint in the lower peninsula. Would you like to see some pictures from Interstate 69? Here we go. <laughs> oh, it's exciting. Woo! Approaching exit. That's too spicy for the air, Leo. <laughs> Approaching exit 70, Lansing Road. Northward to Lansing. <laughs> Here's the name a picture. of a novel coming out soon. <laughs> on 994I69 eastbound near Port Huron. Oh. oh. I think you keep on going down. I like this. Predecessor Ooh. highways. The history Ooh. of these highways. Oh, look at those two guys. Oh, my God. Look at their mustaches. You have to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Part of I-69 is named that. for Louis Chevrolet on the left and David Dunbar Buick on the right. Chevy and Buick. Just a coincidence. They have nothing to do with the vehicles. <laughs> is there a road around Petaluma you could put in there? Oh, there's plenty. I already looked. All of They're all in here. Know. Everything's in here. There's a whole section on interchanges. <laughs> <laughs> Bridges and tunnels. <coughs> oh no, no, no that's no. Jeff's territory. Oh, we'll by stay. the way, you know what? I, the, the feature that I want ways to put up seriously is you can avoid all kinds of. You can avoid tolls. You, you want to avoid, avoid bridges? Yes, yes. Sometimes you can't avoid the bridge. You okay, wait. How do you feel bridge. about tunnels, though, Jeff? I'm okay with tunnels because you remember you but live why? In too much. You work on an island, Jeff. <coughs> there has to be a bridge somewhere. All right. I go through the tunnel. Oh, you go underground. Here is, yeah. uh, if you're a fan of the uh, road signs, the shields, here's a whole gallery of shields. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Everything. These are people you do not want to sit next to on the airplane. <laughs> I, have, I have a friend. Uh, he was the son of a legendary San Francisco Giants baseball broadcaster who was trying to get into the business himself, still is. He's, uh, but he's doing AAA ball, you know, which is, as one does. And it, you go to a lot of small towns, very small towns, doing the play-by-play. -play. And he made it his uh, hobby to take pictures of the post offices in all of these small towns. And for a long time, I got emails from him <laughs> with <laughs> pictures of post offices. All around the country. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. I actually, <laughs> actually created a rule just for you, Doug. <laughs> a special, <laughs> a special email rule just for. Or Doug. just immediately prints them out and someone <laughs> posts it up in your. Oh, office. absolutely! Look at all the shields mm -hmm. here, folks. There are so many shields. I hope you enjoy this. You're all Route 66, then there's Route 70, then there's Route 80. Oh, look here's Ooh, 666. 666. Yeah, the devil. Yeah. 
Many, many shields. Ladies and oh, gentlemen. Put in, um, Tonnelly Road. You want to? Yeah, just one. Okay. It's the worst road I've ever known. Oh, that's the Shields database. I got to get out of the Shields database. Oh. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. How do I get back? Oh, gosh. This Shields mind. thing is a no. dead end. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Shields. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, search for Connolly Road. Huh? Tonnelly. T O N N E L E. T O N N E L E. T O N N E L E. E L E. R D. Okay, let's see if we can. Uh, here's the no merge area. Is it Tonnelly Ave, perhaps? Tonnelly Ave, yeah. Is oh, this New Jersey? Oh, 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 oh. I gotta start over. Gotta do a new search. Because well, I that's, that's was it though. That was Pulaski Skyway. There's Tonnelly Ave. There's the uh, yeah, famous that's it. That's it. no merging sign on the Pulaski Skyway southbound from Tonnelly Avenue. Pulaski uh, Skyway is where where Tony Soprano drove up from up from one and nine local well, onto it. There it is. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. yeah. Pretty darn. Actually, this is Idaho. That's that's not at all. Yeah, yeah. No. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not even close. <laughs> Unless no. we're merging from Idaho to New Jersey. One weird thing in America is why there are so many Pulaski bridges. It was like a World War One Polish fighter. There's lots of Pulaskis. Really? I think it was. You a can't Jeopardy see it, folks, but question. Harris is now yawning. Okay, <laughs> we better wrap this up before we get too deep into the Pulaski. Maze. I'm actually very interested in learning about the lore of Pulaski. I'm just also a <laughs> sleepy person, generally. Paris <laughs> Martineau is at the information. That the was, information that was our, our murder victim who was laughing in the background, you might have heard. Oh, yeah, he's dead <laughs> Listen, now. I show. always hear John's laugh. It delights me every time. It does me too. He's our it does audience. Me too. Now you know why I want to have a live audience in the uh, studio. Uh, a yeah. bunch of jammer bees. Paris Martineau, the information. Is it jammer's B or jammer bees? Jammer B. Where is the plural? No plural. It would be Where's jammer's B if jammer's there was a B. Jammer's B. Like attorney's general. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. What is so. jammer B? What, is, what does that name come from? I know it's your chat handle. Long, long time ago. Yeah. The drummer in the band I was in wore a t-shirt that said, jam or be slammed. Oh. And the next week I showed up with a t-shirt that said, jammer B slamina. <laughs> and the rest is history did you know that slanina is some sort of slovakian languages word for bacon did you know that wow. yeah. google, do a google image search on my last name S -S really and i n a really that's uh that's very tempting but I, instead i'll just say hello to jeff jarvis the leonard town professor for journalistic innovation at the craig newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City yes. University of New York. And now, ladies and gentlemen, images of Slanina. He <laughs> <It> looks delicious. <laughs> it's Romanian? Is that the... Uh, yeah. yeah. Romanian Czech. smoked Czech. bacon. Czech. But uh, apparently the word Slanina applies to many Slavic languages. Jammer bacon. Jammer bacon. Uh, we thank you for joining us. We do Twig every Wednesday. I won't be here for two weeks. So next week, Paris Martineau hosts. We don't let Jeff Jarvis host anymore after, well, not anymore. It's true. What He's happened. been canceled. Badly. Um, after the incident. Who's hosting? Do you have special plans for, for a revolutionary show, Paris? I do. I, oh. I do. And uh, I'm going to have to talk to you about them offline, Jeff. Okay. All right. Okay. So there'll be something exciting next week. And then Benito, who's doing uh, two weeks from hence? Micah. Micah. So you're going to have a lot of fun over the next couple of weeks. I will be back in three weeks. Uh, the show is Wednesday, 2 to 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific. We are uh, 5 to 8 p.m. Eastern. But I have to tell you, uh, it is daylight saving time starts Sunday. So this is oh normally... That's news to me, honestly. I know. No, no, I was shocked when I was informed. So we'll be at 2100 UTC starting next week. <clears throat> UTC doesn't change, but we do. Uh, you can watch the show live as we do it on YouTube, youtube.com slash twit. After the fact, you can download a show, audio or video from this week in Google uh, at twit.tv twit.tv slash twig you can also watch the this week in google youtube channel dedicated to the video or best thing to do subscribe in your favorite podcast player that way you'll get it automatically the minute it's available of a wednesday evening thank you for joining us everybody i will see you in two weeks have a wonderful show next time
Paris. Have a great vacation. I am going Leo to enjoy Lisa. margaritas and tacos galore. Should I wear the fez in? I think you Cabo? should wear the fez on the on airplane the plane. specifically <laughs> through TSA, ideally. <laughs> Uh, sir, can yes. you remove your fez? Yes, sir. I cannot yes. remove the fez. <laughs> you don't you want to see dead what's in the out eyes. of there. I, I swore never to remove the fez. The fez <laughs> is attached. It's sewn in, actually. <laughs> Did you want... Oh, yes. Don't worry. I will be back in uh, three weeks. We will see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great week. And we'll see you next time on This Week in Google. Bye-bye.